beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed when you thank God, mention things one by one. Lord, thank you. I was on my way to Kaduna and the car wanted to capsize. You saved me. Thank you. And God said, ah, this happened January. He said, Lord, I didn't forget. You are too faithful for me to forget that event. He said, you remember this for me? Get ready for another dimension. Thanksgiving. Write it down. Thanksgiving. We must take out quality time to thank him. Number two, I'm teaching you how to maximize, to set the pace to maximize your retreat. What do you do during your personal retreat? Review your progress for the current year, 2017 now. That's what you do. You sincerely, honestly, unashamedly review the year. And I'll dwell here a bit to help us understand. I want all of us to really understand these things. The second thing you do at a retreat is to review the year. And you don't just review the year carelessly. You break your review into six different units. Write it down. The first area is your spiritual life. You review your spiritual life. Review your passion for God review the illumination of the word that you have accessed what do you know now that you did not know last year what do you understand now that you did not understand last year review your character create a scale for it can i say i am improving not just in the knowledge of god am i useful to society am i becoming a leader am i becoming a person of character so your spiritual life is the first area that you have to review let me tell you something about retreats you must be honest you see why you have to be alone excuse me you must be honest you must be unashamed you must be very sincere before god number two mental development and your capacity you review that area did i cooperate with the word of god to develop my mind did I acquire useful informations that will set me on the cutting edge of relevance? Did I just pray and fast and build my life spiritually and allowed my mind and my relevance with my sociological environment to die? Are we together now? Yes, it matters that we not only grow spiritually, but we sustain the ability to be useful. We must be able to communicate the life of Christ to our environment. So you review it. What books did I read? What do I know about leadership? Did I learn anything? Did I build my mind? What do I know about mindsets? 
am I still carrying my village in my head, moving around with it? Am I still carrying the attributes that keep me poor and a failure? Am I still carrying the attributes that make good things to live my life? Is God helping us? Number three, review how much you have taken care of your body, your health. In a retreat, yes sir. That's the best place so that you can easily ask for forgiveness when because the only person you really have offended is God. This body belongs to him. For some of us 2017 has been a useful year spiritually and a careless one health wise. Is that true? Review. Oh, this year Lord I apologize. I ate anyhow I did all kinds of things. Anyhow destroyed my body. Why do you make these reviews? Because you need this body to last very long. Are we together? Gone are the days when people don't talk about this in church and they tell people the most important thing is your spiritual life. And you see someone of 32 looking like 50. They ask him how old are you? He said, I will be 33 next year. Say, so, so why are you looking at his condition? Make crayfish bed. No, you are not a crayfish. You are created in the image and the likeness of God. Some of those sayings, we must start getting them out of the body of Christ. They look very nice, but these are the things that authorize Satan to destroy our lives. Hallelujah. Your health. And some of us, it is not even poverty. It's carelessness. Write that word down. This is a word that you should look at very carefully during your retreat. Many people's lives are destroyed, including their health, because of one word carelessness unattentiveness to details hallelujah number four review your assignment the reason for which God brought you review your purpose your kingdom service these are things that you review at a time of retreat Lord, I look at the compass of my destiny. Did I make progress this year? Can I say from prophecy to manifestation, I have moved forward. You see, this assignment and purpose thing, you, you, you hardly even hear it again. People don't talk about it. It says, lo, I come as it is written of me in the volume of the book to do your will. The reason why many people have time to waste their life is because they are not occupied with purpose. If purpose does not occupy you, anybody can call you any day and say, are you free, sir? Yes, come and follow me somewhere. God designed your time to be well invested fulfilling your assignment. This idleness that our generation has is because we are not occupied in purpose. And then the recent um i would say trick of the devil is to make people busy but not moving forward motions like sitting on a rocking chair the chair is rocking consistently but you are not making progress oftentimes jesus would retreat and look okay i must be here i must be there your assignment your purpose I don't know my purpose, but you can look at your service in the house of God. Use that as a template. What was your level of commitment? What was your level of diligence? Are we together? Very important. This is what I do during my retreats. Number four. The fourth area. Number what? Number five. I beg your pardon. Your finance. Write it down. Your finances. You have to flog it out in the secret place. Are we together? Now you've looked at your spiritual life, mental transformation, your body, your health. Is that true? And then your assignment, then your finances. We're very unapologetic about the usefulness of financial resources. 
both in the quality of our lives and kingdom advance. I'm not one of those pretentious people that would downplay the role of financial resources in helping an individual live a useful life. I've shared it again and again with us that living to seek money all your life is a cost. It's not just bad, it's a cost. It's one of the most distracting strategies of Satan. When a man spends all your life looking for money, it's a cost. Nobody was ever designed to do that. What time then do you have in building? This chase for money has made us to leave our children to the hands of Satan. Has made us to leave our purpose. There are people called as prophets and apostles, but they only realize one week to their death. They spent their whole life chasing money and they never find it. Please let me say it again and again. Do not ever plan to continue pursuing money all your life. There is an exact time where God should help you put together financial resources that afford you the opportunity to serve God so that you can turn and focus on the more useful things. Making financial pursuits priority in your life forever is a cause. It may be within the time you are seeking, that's all right. So this is very important. Review. Because for some of us, our whole lives is built around money, money, and we never get it. You talk two minutes, money, everything money. You say Jesus, the person replies back with money. Money, money, every time. You have to review. Is that true? Was I able to engage the keys that bring for wealth and abundance this year? Or I just had it and it didn't work? You will easily know whether you engage it by the results you got. Finance is one area where your disobedience shows immediately. Immediately. So you must be sincere. This year, God gave me one million naira. God gave me hundred thousand naira. What did I do with it? I made a mistake. I gave 100,000 Naira to 419ers. You don't jump that. What is the lesson that I have to learn there? Is that true? God gave me 200,000. I bought a shoe and I bought a shirt that is not yet my level to prove a point to people who are not interested. Oh Lord, forgive me. Don't say it's all right. Ask for forgiveness because that is sin. Is that true? When God gives you resources and you waste it, if nobody has told you it is sin, believe me. Lord, I gave you offering of 10, 10 Naira. I gave you offering of 20, 20 Naira. But my average dinner was 2,000 Naira. It's a sign that you are not a serious believer. I know you think, I'm not talking about money. You know that God has helped us. But it's important. These are some of the things that you do during your retreat. A measure of your passion for the house of God. And that includes with your resources. All this 10, 10 naira giving. You know, most times we lie to ourselves that it doesn't matter. The amount does not matter. Are we not Bible students? He that soweth sparingly. What is sparingly? Small, scanty. Shall reap, but he shall reap scanty. That's why you get one testimony in four months. Correct? You are reaping. But he that soweth bountifully, lavishly, extravagantly, he said he will reap. The Bible said that scriptures cannot be broken. So don't say that it does not matter. It could be a time for you. I remember it was in one of my retreats, honestly speaking, that the Lord challenged me on this. The level of giving was far less than the level of God's blessing on my life. And the Lord rebuked me. And I made up my mind and I made a vow. There is a minimum amount I will never give as offering again forever till Jesus comes. Yes. It's true. It's true. It's true. So review it. What do you understand about finances? Review it. If all you know about finances is business and job is better, you have to sit down and flog that area. 
because neither of them in themselves will give you money number six relationships the sixth area that you will look at in your retreat is your relationships marital relationships career relationships business relationships destiny relationships some of us almost wasted our year today because of the presence of bad and useless associations associations that should have nothing nothing to do with our lives is all this uh, is our tribe is our church is our this is that true the bible says he that works with the wise will be wise but it says the companion of fools will be destroyed relationships it matters review them review them who did you give access to this year whose presence destroyed your productivity who did you give access to this year that destroyed your potential for more results who should you have given access to this year that would have improved your life some of you your relationship here you even need to go back and check with the holy spirit what degree of access did you give him relationships now when you review these six areas let me be honest with you your entire life revolves around these six areas your spiritual life your mental development your health and physical well-being is that true your assignment your career whatever it is your financial resources and your relationships there is no man that will ever be a failure if he excels in this area usually what i do is that i scale all six areas and look at the best performing area and the worst performing area and i must answer why i won't just say i will improve why why was this the best and why was this the worst if your relationships for inside for instance was the worst this year what don't i know about friendship what have i not learned maybe i'm neglecting honor maybe i'm not valuable enough maybe i'm too much of a talkative maybe i'm not somebody who can be committed secret maybe i'm somebody who is not friendly maybe i'm someone who is jealous lord help me you write it down are you seeing how people grow in retreat you never come out of that experience the same no sir people jump into the new year and laugh and fast for 10 days or 21 days and become the same old them again and you see the bible says you never put new wine in an old wine skin if your wine skin is old nothing new will ever come you will have to replace that wine skin like a snake molting shedding off the old skin so that there can be room for expansion he said go and borrow vessels borrow the wine skin borrow not a few and the more the wine skin the more capacity for the anointing to function is that true you must take out time so this is the second thing you do the first thing let's review thanksgiving thanksgiving then the second thing you do is a review of the year i gave you six aspects of your review the third thing is that you must plan for 2018 plan for 2018 i'll tell you how to plan shortly please write this it's very important plan for 2018 it's amazing how many people don't plan they think just because they are writing what they would do they think that's planning that's not planning many times those things are just wishes because at the end of the year less than one percent of them ever happen that's not a goal how do you plan set clear goals in these six areas we just reviewed set clear goals with scriptural backings in each of them i am convinced that if you set a goal in any of these six areas and it doesn't have a scriptural backing it will not come to pass because there is no basis for committing god remember your success is based on your partnership you are not going to plan alone for by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail you must plan and add a scriptural backing that means a spiritual basis for committing god in those areas and then you must add time targets to them 
every day is not conducive for everything no sir when you buy a product if we pick up this bottle of water you will see there's a little inscription there the manufacturing date and then they write something best before in other words to get the best of this pro this product it should be consumed within this time range putting time target to your goals puts a healthy pressure on you to be able to achieve them the reason why i believe that a lot of us have defaulted on our goals is because there is no time allocation so we make it look like every day is conducive no sir if you build a house at 70 years it's not a testimony if you finish school at 60 years it's not a testimony is that true if a woman gives birth to her first child at 60 years, it's an unusual testimony. It's because it's not supposed to be so. Is that true? If God blesses you at 80 years, who are you going to leave it for? You will be angry and be frustrated. So there are things that we must trust God to help us fast track in our lives. Say amen. And let me come to the gentleman and just talk to us a little. Please plan. Turn to any brother seated there and say, brother, plan. Just leave the sisters in one minute. Say, brother, plan. Listen. Spiritual people, spiritual people are some of the poorest planners we have. Especially in this country. We don't plan for our greatness. We just hope and wish and pray. Bishop Oyedeko said, praying without planning is playing without knowing. You have to be like Nehemiah. With one hand you are building, but with another hand you are holding the sword. Both hands cannot hold the sword. One hand is holding the sword and another hand is building. He says, every house is built by some man, but God is the builder of all. That some man must build. The horse is prepared for battle, but safety is of the Lord. But it does not stop you from preparing the horse. Are we together now? I expect every gentleman here to start planning, married or not, sit down and plan. Here's what scripture says, when I was a child, I thought like a child, correct? I understood like a child, I acted like a child. He says, now that I am a man, I lay aside these childish things. Some of you, that's what will happen in your retreat. You have to sit down and tell yourself, this childishness in my life must go forever. Comma, this foolishness in my life must go forever. This stupidity in my life must go forever. Somehow we have this belief that because God is able, without our engaging him through the application of the wisdom of God, things will just happen just like that. We are tired of irresponsible fathers. We are tired of irresponsible gentlemen. We are tired of nuisances to society. A gentleman who should be capable of feeding and taking care of his siblings and taking care of a generation is still depending on his old and aged parents. Blasting in tongues but depending there. It should not be. It should not be. There is an honor that comes when certain things are in place in your life. Is that true? I'm speaking to everybody, but I'm speaking especially to our gentlemen. Please, let's go back to God and plan. This rat race of visiting everybody. Today you are here. Tomorrow you are there. My brother, what are you doing with your life? You say it is well. No, it's not well. You sit down and plan. What are you doing with your life? Oh, I want to marry a person. Wonderful. And eat what? Show me the blueprint of, of the, not the timetable of your cooking, the, the capability to be able to fend and take care of the family. Especially, do you know, because in Africa, let's be very honest, if I handpick everybody here, almost everybody here has at least four or five people depending to eat from him. Is that true? Leave the ladies. Gentlemen, I'm talking to you. I'm coming to the ladies. Pick anybody at random. 
there is one neighbor, one, one cousin you know, one relative that you didn't even know you are related to that needs you to feed. So gone are the days where you say, I have enough for myself. No. You must flog it out. Plan. 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 I will take the month of January to study only on finances. Even if they give you a message on rapture, you say, I'm born again. I have a goal. I'm studying on finances. I'm spending the month of February to study on faith. On faith. I'm studying the month of, uh, the month of March to study on the anointing. I'm studying the month of uh, June or April or whatever to study on my giftings and potentials. I'm spending the month of July to study on ministry or my assignment. That's how we grow. You don't get up every day and open to any part of scripture and just read and convince yourself that you are growing. You must plan. Are we together? By the grace of God, there, there is almost a message concerning every major area of your life. Go to the media stand. There are teachings. The media department can help you compartmentalize the teachings. If it is success, if it's your spiritual growth, character development, you know, salvation, etc. Whatever it is. There are teachings and they are all free. Camp with them. You must plan. Number four. The fourth thing that I want us to do by the grace of God is that all of us as a family of faith individually we are going to be studying the book of Proverbs. Write it down. We are going to be studying the book of Proverbs. All the 31 chapters. Study, not read. There's a difference between studying and reading. You can take two, two chapters and finish it in 15 days. You didn't study, you read. You glanced through. Let's use this break period to extensively study the book of Proverbs. Go online. There are all kinds of commentaries that have been done on that book. Study carefully. Don't read to finish. Read to understand. The book of Proverbs, the Lord put this in my heart. We're studying. The fifth admonition which comes as an instruction is that every one of us as much as God has granted us the understanding have a sacrificial seed wrapped with expectation this is between you and God a sacrifice is not a seed a sacrifice is bread he said cast your bread upon the water he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater but there are times he will challenge you to give both the bread and the seed a sacrificial seed I'm already doing mine and I'm doing it again and again. It's a principle I have practiced for many years that at the end of the year into the next year, they will, I, will, I will have to commit to something that costs me, both to God and to the ministry. Every year without fail, I do this. I'm not talking of 10 naira, 20 naira, something that even you, you will stand and say, Lord, I give you thanks between you and God. Why are you doing that? You are engaging the mystery of sacrifice and securing the year coming. Now please don't do it if you don't have the revelation. This has nothing to do with trying to manipulate money. And this is a mistake that men of God make. When it comes to things like seeds and sacrifice, you see them expressing a lot of desperation. I, I always say this, every man of God's success is not based on the giving of members. It is based on his own obedience to the principles of the kingdom. Koinonia will only prosper to the degree to which we are complying with the precepts of the kingdom. Are we together? These five things, I promise you that when you do them, you will be ready for an amazing 2018. Number one, thanksgiving. Number two, review. That number two for me is one of the most important. You have to review. Don't just wait and say, ah, apostle, send us the prophetic word for next year. My body is shaking. I need to know what is the prophetic word. This is how a lot of people keep recycling carelessness again after again. And, 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 and then again and again, and they find out that the year remains the same. 
different words coming but there's no progress in our lives so go back get a notebook don't just get a little piece of paper it's a sign that you are not serious with your own destiny get a notebook and sit down and write these things out come up by the spirit one of the things i can guarantee you that will happen in your silence is that the holy spirit will speak to you he will correct you he will applaud you he will rebuke you he will encourage you he will challenge you let the chastening of the lord not be something that you resent whatever happens in that secret place embrace it as the refiner's fire it is going to be the key to your next level is that true praise god so you do this this is my first encouragement for us tonight these five things the lord put it in my heart and i felt to share with us to help us maximize our time proverbs chapter 4 blessed be the name of the lord we're reading the first 10 verses proverbs chapter 4 Just to encourage us and then we'll pray proverbs chapter 4 is it projected okay hear ye children the instructions of a father and attend to no understanding for i give you good doctrine forsake ye not my law solomon is teaching us here for I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thy heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and leave. Verse 5. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Verse 6, forsake her not. Who is the her? Wisdom, understanding. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Take note. The benefits of embracing wisdom and understanding. She shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. 7 says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Verse 8 says, exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. Who will bring you? Wisdom and understanding, not just wisdom. Wisdom and understanding will bring you to honor when thou dost embrace her. We are reading to verse 10, verse 9. She shall give unto thy head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver unto you. Verse 10. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. From preservation to honor to longevity, wisdom and understanding. Wisdom is the capacity to understand the mind of Christ. Wisdom is the ability to communicate the scriptural solution concerning every issue of life the scriptural solution to every issue of life is called wisdom you are wise to the degree to which you comprehend the ability to profess scriptural solution there are cultural solutions to life's problems there are occultic solutions to life problems there are emotional solutions to life's problems none of them in themselves are able to provide lasting solutions but the wisdom of god the wisdom of god i have pursued the wisdom of god with my life because when I was exposed to my own folly and the fact that I am so limited and the consequences of foolishness, the 
Bible says he that walks with the wise shall be wise himself but he said just being the companion of a fool your destruction is guaranteed if as a companion of a fool you are destroyed then what happens to the fool just being a friend to a foolish man allowing his foolish decisions to influence you it guarantees doom for you that means every fool has no hope foolishness is bankruptcy of the knowledge of God's principles it's not just acting foolishly the foolish action is a product of bankruptcy in your spirit and in your mind I like us to carefully examine the decisions in our lives I want us to carefully examine the things that we do the degree to which you have succeeded is a show of how you have manifested the wisdom of God every time results are not produced in your life is because there was a defaulting in the wisdom of God it's an uncomfortable truth but it's the secret to rising and pressing for wisdom I am ever ready to be shown by God the areas in my life where I am bankrupt of the wisdom of God it doesn't embarrass me I want to know I search for it like one who is looking for treasure if you do not contend for wisdom your life will be an unending circle of pain an unending circle of regrets an unending circle of many things most of us look at our lives this year and we can see several points in our lives where foolishness veered us off the path of glory and brought us into a lot of pain some of us lost destiny help us some of us lost the gift of men is that true some of us lost opportunities some of us lost access several things no wisdom some of us this year we approached our parents wrongly and right now there is a divide between us and our parents lack of wisdom some of us had zeal with no knowledge and it brought a lot of trouble to our businesses a lot of trouble to our ministries wisdom is very important the bible says it is the principal thing and you see, the Bible says, I commend you to the word of God. It says it's able to make you wise. The word of God makes men wise. Just by focusing your attention on the word of God and imbibing the principles, the modus operandi of the kingdom, it makes you wise. The word of God teaches you how to relate with difficult people. The word of God teaches you how to speak and when to speak so that you don't get into trouble. The word of God teaches you how to respond to unbelievers. Many of us come from families where there is a mixture of people who are both of the faith and not of the faith. Wisdom teaches you how to communicate. Wisdom teaches you that when you are angry, be silent because every Every time you speak you will speak in the flesh there are many people who just obeying this principle would have saved them businesses worth millions of naira they uttered words that they are still paying for it today are we together our challenges dr mike murdoch will say there is no money problem anywhere and i agree with him most of our challenges because you see we are victims of our understanding and most of the things we have executed in our lives are reflections of the limitations of our knowledge our wisdom our understanding guess what the bible says it says true wisdom a house is built then it says by understanding it is established the firmness of that house is a product of understanding it says true knowledge is a house filled with every pleasurable thing we must make up our minds that we are going to access the word of God not just as an instrument to heal us of the guilt of um, spirituality I would say for many people our study of the word is just to so that the devil does not plant any seed in us that we are backsliding but we are not learning anything this is the greatest book that will help your career and your business this is the greatest book that will help your marriage 
this is the greatest book the sufferings in our world today is because we have ignored the truths that are here we have read it like a religious book we have read it to preach we have read it to to carry out bible studies and prayer sessions but we have not read it for the purpose of accessing wisdom for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom i choose the way of the lord listen there is no age you get to in life that guarantees that all your decisions will be flawlessly accurate this is the book that coordinates our success there is no educational height you get to that guarantees that your decision making process will be accurate even if you study psychology it is not enough to give you all the parameters that are needed in themselves to make wise decisions i have lost confidence in myself outside of the world it says thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path in this wicked world listen this ministry by the grace of God was built on this word I have meticulously built my life on this word I don't trust any other thing that is not this word I bring you a proposition tonight as we round off this year I want you to return to a place where you hold an unquenchable hunger and value for the word many of us pray but our lives are bankrupt of wisdom our decisions show the absence of the influence of the word it's very clear that we are not being governed by the word i can know how much you have imbibed the word by the excellency and the quality of your communication I'm not talking of linguistic excellence. I'm talking of the wisdom that flows from your words. I see your behavior. I see how you disappoint your enemy's expectations and I know you have stayed with the world. When you become a victim of people's expectations, wait and see. He's going to shout at this person. Ah, you come and shout. Ah, you have given yourself cheap to life. The word of God is not coordinating you. Jesus disappointed the expectations of the people many times for instance when they brought to him the woman who was caught in adultery they expected he was going to rant because they were talking about the word of god you know every time satan wants to challenge you he uses scripture moses said this and jesus kept quiet wisdom for there is a time to speak and there is a time to be silent there are times where your loudest communication is in your silence your silence will answer more than any word for instance when responding to your critic your critic already knows the truth don't try to explain it's a waste of time you don't respond to critics by verbal communication you respond to critics by consistency consistency of your results is that true when I look at our lives and I see our lives surrounded by pride and arrogance, it is because we have not seen the deception of pride. The deception of pride is like a man climbing a ladder and you take the ladder away. That's exactly what pride does. I love the word of God. I stopped reading my Bible to finish it. I stopped reading my Bible to crime scriptures. I found out that it was truly a roadmap in this darkness darkness where there is deception how many of you have followed people's advices and their advices crashed you not because they were bad people they were just humans they advise you to beat your wife if she goes wrong say i tried it on my own wife look at how she's behaving now you tried it on your own wife and that's when you, you your prayer stopped being answered that's the first thing that started happening to you and many other bad things happened to you I can look at your life and know how much the word of God has prevailed by the quality of the results that you produce. 
You see, let me tell you something. If I look at your life and I see you are dirty and tattered, as simple as neatness, I know you don't have respect for the word of God. If the word of God can purge your spirit, then your life will reflect it. You cannot be growing in the world and you are dirty, unkept, looking like a thief all the time and say it does not matter. No, sir. No, sir. The word of God will make you to buy iron because it will teach you that there is a way you appear before kings. There is a way kings behave. And the Bible tells you that you have been made according to Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10. We have been made unto God a kingdom of kings and priests. So you speak like a king. You act like a king. Is that true? It is the word of God that is the antidote to these conflicts that our cultures create in our heads. Christian versus Hausa. Christian versus Yoruba. Christian versus Igbo. You don't know which one to embrace and which one to leave. I propose to you a culture that is above and superior to every other one. That any part of your culture that does not subscribe to the word of God, eject it immediately. The kingdom is a culture. Most of us, our lives have been destroyed because of our, our unfortunate loyalty to cultural tenets that are completely anti-Christ. So although uh, we are attempting again and again to be spiritual, but the, the thinkings that we have imbibed from culture continue to fight God in our lives. I have no loyalty to anything that is not of God. This is it. This is my new culture. Scripture tells me that I've been called out of every tribe. I'm not saying culture is bad in itself, but trust me, there are demonic and satanic areas. There are certain aspects of cultures that are not seen in themselves, but I tell you there are weights. A weight is something that can provide an impedance. It can stop your movement. It says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So when you are carrying a weight that is destroying your life. In our place, we don't do this. In our place, women cannot talk. Who is this woman preaching? I can't listen to her because in our, which your place? Who invented it? Oh, God is speaking. I will listen. In our place, young people don't talk to old people even respectfully, even under the anointing. Are you seeing that now? It is important that we recalibrate our minds so that we begin to view life from the perspective of the kingdom. They drove children from coming to Jesus. Something about their culture taught them that. And Jesus said, ah, 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 let the little children come to me and do not forbid them. He said, for, for such. That means these children roaming around are teaching you a lesson you are not learning. That until you become like one of these, not childish, but childlike. Very malleable in your faith and understanding. He says, the kingdom is for such. Are you getting blessed tonight? Get wisdom, get understanding, make a conscious decision that in the name of the Lord Jesus, although I was born in so 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 place, I was born under so 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 condition. By the grace of God, my children will not live under that kind of condition. The Lord, by His Spirit, will lift me. It's not about Nazareth, it's not about where you come from, it's about your ability to walk with the Word of God. And bring that transformation. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, I have made it a personal commitment as a minister that I will never create seditions or favoritism based on geographic factors. Never. Never. You will never see me do that. I love my people, wonderful people, love my region where I come from. But by the grace of God, I've traveled to every one of the regions of this nation and they love me unreservedly because I do not and will never, never try to create any sense of superiority of one culture above another. I love everyone. The Bible says there is neither male nor female, neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free. We're all in Christ. 
So I cannot see I can say I K is Igbo and say I'm um, Pastor Alpha is from Kogi State, Promise is from Delta, and I say you are my person. Be careful. Those are the kinds of mindsets that rob us because your destiny helper will come as directed. It may not be from your place. Joseph of Arimathea. The Bible does not record that he was part of the disciples of Jesus. How about Simon of Cyrene? The people who played very major roles in the life of Jesus. Jesus was rejected by his own people. They ran away. Anna the prophetess. Simeon in the temple. Joseph of Arimathea. Look at the strange people who came and attended to him. Wisdom. There are ministries that have crashed into pieces because of lack of wisdom. They make it look like if you are this tribe, you are not welcome. If you are that tribe, you are not welcome. We must be careful because we are dealing with a global society. Part of the principles you learn when you study global leadership is that you must concentrate on the points of similarity. Concentrate on the points of similarity. Nobody will be comfortable in an atmosphere where their core values are being insulted simply because you are trying to demonstrate the superiority of another culture. So we unify ourselves as believers with one common culture. It's called the kingdom. The kingdom is God's culture where we allow the influence and the reign of Christ to permeate our lives regardless of our geographic differences. Ah. Elohim Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. the Bible that teaches us how to be wise financially it says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children so when you see a young man spending as if he would not marry you see that living a fake and a foolish life that's a selfish man because he's not thinking about his children and his children's children the Bible says it the Bible says there is he that scattereth. Hear the wisdom of God. There is he that scattereth and increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. That means there is a relationship between greed and lack. The Bible establishes it. So when there is lack in your life, you check and you see that there is scripture is fulfilled in your life. The Bible talks about tithing. That there is a relationship between the opening of your heavens and your tithing. Regardless of whatever opinions are available scripture cannot be broken it is by these two immutable things God swore his word will not be broken heaven and earth will pass away but brothers and sisters men and their philosophies and their pride and their arrogance nations and kingdoms will rise and fall but the word of God remains consistent one of the greatest fears if I would say in my life is to find out that at the end of my life I believe they lie I wasted my time following a man, following a philosophy, and then at the end, he will tell me, I'm sorry, me too, I'm as confused as you. I choose the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. This ministry is a tithing ministry. I'm a tithing person. There is no devil and no doctrine that will ever stop us. That's why there is no amount of recession. I say it with all humility. By the grace of God Almighty that is capable of limiting me as a person and limiting the work of God. For he said, I will build my church. And if you allow me build it, I will build it in such a manner that the gates of hell will not prevail. This is the wisdom of God. 
I have learned from the wisdom of God that as a man of God, your assignment is to lift up Jesus, not yourself. This is the secret to crowd. You lift up yourself, you pay for it. He says, and I, if I be lifted, the reward for lifting me is mysteriously. I will draw all men, not some men, not some territories. When I found this, I said, Lord, I have no business building any empire. It is about Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Thank God for the honor, but I'm so happy to let you know that the one who really deserves all the glory and all the honor is Jesus, the head of the church, the builder of Koinonia. It came from the word. I'm showing you things from the word. I have found out in the word of God that when you honor the body of Christ, there are dimensions you enter. It is, it is the word of God that gave me that wisdom. So I can insult a man because I do not like something about him, yet he's carrying an anointing that can help me. It is for this cause many are weak. For this cause many are sick. For this cause many do sleep. There are many people who would have cheaply received miracles, but the vessels that carry the anointing are not appealing to them. The scripture says there is a treasure in earthen vessel. He didn't tell you the vessel is golden. He said the vessel is earthen. So he can be angry like Elijah or temperous like Moses. They still are anointed. When I found out I don't have any problem with any man of God. You never hear me open my mouth and tear down a man and his ministry because I believe that there is always something I can learn. Even if I cannot learn spirituality, I can learn excellence. I can learn leadership. When you search for Jesus everywhere, you will find him. Hmm. I learned from this scripture that as a man, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So I stopped wasting my time packaging a reality that is not here. Gone are the days where people try to buy suit, buy shoe with empty understanding and then their minds reduce their lives back. Have you seen territories like that? They try to do physical things. They have not educated the people in that environment. Then they make tap. In six months, they spoil the tap to look like the mindsets of those living in that environment. No sensitization. So I learned that the key to my lifting is not buying clothes, buying shoes, buying all these things to prove a point that I can wait with the Holy Spirit to reconstruct my understanding and that inevitably the things I so admire will helplessly run towards me. Oh my God, and how, how true. This is one of the truest revelations I know in scripture. The supernatural power of the transformed mind and its ability to effortlessly draw to your life the realities that are consistent with your understanding. It is true. Are we together? The wisdom of God tells you there is hope for a tree. Even it be cut short. In our society where we are, we are more than happy to conclude on people. You look at someone and say, this guy used to be an arm robber. There's no hope for him. But when you study the word of God, the Bible is full of people that God transformed their lives overnight. And my Bible says that rejected stone. Ha! Ah, that rejected stone. I'm speaking to someone in your family. And all the nonsense and rubbish that they say about people. There are people who started this year with their pride of spirituality and right now they are not they are almost not even born again because their pride humbled them they maintain their spiritual life by themselves but there are people who started this year saying lord if you are looking for any vessel can you use this drunkard and god said that's all i want come and right now as i speak to you they are in various stages around the world setting up place the kingdom of darkness because he uses the foolish things when you understand this you you will never run your mouth at anybody and conclude on people. You don't see a woman who is frying a car and look and say, oh dear, poor woman, because God can pick someone. You see, the word of God makes men wise. The way we speak sometimes shows that we have not read scripture. Whether it is a poor man, a rich man, 
I will hug you and greet you. I won't say you, you are this. Go, no, no. Of course, I will give you honor. Because God, I have seen in my little life how God has transformed people overnight and made princes to be servants and servants to become princes. If the Baba of Joseph knew he was barbing the prime minister, he would have begged him and said, Sir, don't forget me. Oh. There were people of Bas and John lifted simply because they dared to advise him while he was in prison. When he came out, he sent for them, created one committee and dropped them there. He said, eat before I change the committee. And he said it very openly, not anything in the hiding. I brought this person here because he was there for me. Wisdom. Wisdom teaches you to be there for people at their worst areas because they will never forget you. People will forget you when they, if, if, if I hold a banquet for plenty people, you hold that banquet as a king, so you forget everybody. But when someone comes to you in the cave of Adullam, you say, I will never forget you. Everybody ran away from me, but you stood here. One of the quickest way to be rich is find somebody rising. Find a vision rising. Be part of it with all diligence. That's a free ride to the wealthy place. I guarantee you. Some of our parents today know people that would have changed their life in a heartbeat. They are crying for rent. Whereas somebody that they would have helped with 50 naira 20 years ago would give them an estate today. The word of God making us wise. Making us wise. Making us wise. Making us wise. Hold your Bible in one minute. And I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, there is, there is wisdom in this scripture. There is wisdom in this scripture. There is wisdom in this scripture. I'm tired of foolishness in my life. Lord, I come to terms with the fact that my decisions are obviously showing a bankruptcy of the word of God. The quality of my decisions are a revelation that the wisdom of God is not at work in my life. The quality of my decisions, the quality of my results are questioning the efficacy of the word of God in my life. Are you praying? I'm not asking you whether you have been faithful with Bible study. I'm not asking you whether you have been faithful with your, your devotion or whatever it is. I am asking you, have you allowed the wisdom of God to influence your understanding? Do you live your life trading the mysteries of the kingdom? Or do you live your life guessing and hoping that at a point in your life things will change? It's risky to run your life by your own your own formula hallelujah sit down the wisdom of god come the wisdom of god teaches us how to relate with people is that true when when you study the wisdom of god the word of god you will know that whoever wants friends will not sit down and say call me text me be my friend that friendship is a harvest you have to sow the seed so if i sit down and i find out that i love god but there are no friends as a lady nobody likes me as a guy nobody likes me the secret is that something about your life is creating an environment that is pungent to friendship see that when you lack helpers in your life the bible gives you a prescription when you lack helpers in your life i can tell you immediately there are things you are not doing among them there is no prophecy on your life because destiny helpers don't come on their own it is one aspect of your life that it is pure prophecy that calls them many of us we have used our words to program wars ladies ah, it is not for us we are not us we are the we are the um uh, what they call that thing we are the outcasts we are the ones who our parents cannot just leave it to these people and 
the Bible says do not say before an angel I made a mistake we have programmed nonsense and rubbish a name God did not call you you have allowed yourself to be called it again and again you called yourself ugly there is nowhere in scripture where you are called ugly you called yourself irresponsible the word of God does not call you that way Open my eyes, help me believe I am what you say. Hallelujah. So friendship. The Bible says, cast not away your confidence. Confidence is not pride. Uh -uh. Confidence is psychological stability that is on the strength of the truth you have found in scripture. That's confidence. Stability. That is based on the truth of God's word. If you tell me, Apostle, I, I was passing across a shrine and I heard them talking about you, that they will kill you tomorrow. I'm going to sleep this night. I won't wake up and do any special prayer through the night of God. It can't be just a joke. If you know the mysteries that keep this man standing. Yeah, yeah. Uh -uh. You surround yourself with mysteries like chariots. When the spirit of death knocks on your door, three scriptures come out like, like fire. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Number two, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long and that it shall be well with you. Number three, I set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing, I advise you and I chose it. Do you fight a man outside his will? Even God stands in the door of your heart and knocks. Why wouldn't Satan knock? Why wouldn't death knock? If God is knocking to enter. I don't know about you. The Bible says a man who has no control over his spirit is like a city without war. Anything that must enter my life, if God knocks to enter, nothing will enter on his own. It's my revelation. So when men say there is a casting down, they allowed it somewhere. For me, when it knocks, I say, get back. For me, there is a lifting up. See, I'm not just entertaining you. I'm showing you how the word of God makes a man wise. It constructs your understanding. The Bible says he daily loads me with benefit. I expect favor every day. Recycled after 24 hours. It's not because I'm a preacher. I expect it. I found it. I found thy word and I ate it. It was a joy and a rejoicing. The word was not written for preachers, brothers and sisters. It was written for those who can believe. My mother started learning these principles and you would find that people will start calling take a bag of rice give your mother take this give your mother working for her she's not a preacher and it's not because she's my mother it works for anybody he said declare ye that he might be justified i will never say i am a failure no sir no sir no sir no sir just because there is no food in your room, most believers will come, God, this life self, Aluta Continua, Victoria Escarta, is, is a curse. You are reciting, you are enchanting, it's the same thing as being given a charm in a herbalist shrine, and you read it. That's what we have been doing. You come in and you see lack and insufficiency, you declare, while I look not at the things that are unseen, but the things that are seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change, but the things that are unseen, I know that one day I will feed nations. Come on now. You are going through times in your life you don't understand what is happening. You don't give room to depression. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I know my Redeemer lives. Bible said Job did not curse God. The way we act is a revelation as to whether the word of God has worked in us. You go back and you meet friends. Ah, Omega, and then they say one kind of very devilish, poisonous, and vulgar word. You call a human being a dog, you call a human being. It used to be a joke, but now that you have the revelation. You lovingly say, no, I'm not a dog. I know exactly dogs in scripture are used to communicate Gentiles and people who are at the basest levels of life. I will not confess that. 
Bible says he has made me a king and a priest. I remember when I was in secondary school, there's something they call Yabi. Do you know it? Where two people will sit down and look for very nasty expressions, very vulgar descriptions of themselves. The goal is for it to be funny. So somebody, usually there are a group of people who are like the referees. I will say my own, you'll be angry and say your own, and then, you know, that's why people were not doing well. Notice people enter JS1 and by the time they finish writing exams, they come out, the only thing they come out with is a good certificate. Common sense gone. Health gone. They are sick. They have troubles. God has not given me the spirit of fear. The Bible says I shall not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day. In my world, there's nothing like ember months. He daily loads. This is the day the Lord has made. He didn't say the Lord and Satan, the Lord alone made that day. Satan too was waiting for God to make the day. It was God that made the day. I rejoice in it and I am glad. You will never see me frowning my face and you ask me why. I said, Kai, this word, Nigeria. I said, no. He said, for with joy shall I draw. I've taught you this. Frustrate Satan by remaining joyful. He said, rejoice in the Lord, not in your results. If you rejoice in your results, the day you don't see it, you will not rejoice again. If you rejoice in your CGPA, your job, your new employment, I rejoice in the Lord eyes are on him regardless of the results my eyes are on him you pick a medical report and he looks at you he says the, the medical report says you have all kinds of lumps and all kinds of growth and the devil says that's it oh. in case you don't know the name is cancer it's just that it's forming come keep watching and you sit down and go online signs of cancer they say it starts like lumps hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you come and meet a maker and then he will confirm it to you he says it's true and drop that report and say lord if i die who will dance you are reducing the number of people who will praise you ask hezekiah isaiah went to him in chapter 38 and said hezekiah set your house in order hezekiah said nonsense i respect you you're a prophet of god but leave me and god shut the door hezekiah said god what did i hear you say remember your temple when you talk about the temple god listens oh lord your house oh and he said no 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 please isaiah go back go back go back i think it was a prayer department i was i was um Yes, on Tuesday, I was rounding up their session with them and I told them something. I said, as a worker in this ministry, there are benefits that should be yours. They are not, they are not privileges, they are rights. As a worker, there are certain things that should be yours. The Bible said a worker is worthy. The word worthy there is deserving of his wages. Not just a worker in Koinonia. A worker in the house of God. The closest simile to wages is salary. That means that there should be something that leaves heaven for me. You have gotten your salary for being a civil servant of Nigeria. Have you gotten your salary for being a worker in the house of God? Is God speaking to you? The way I speak way I act, the way I understand is a revelation. When you look at your child and beat your child and kick your child and say you are, you are an idiot, you are a stupid child, I don't know why you and your foolish mother, you are revealing something. The kicking is a revelation. It's a revelation that number one, you don't know that children come from God. Number two, you do not know that fatherhood is an office recognized in the realm of the spirit. There is a priesthood office that fatherhood has. The mother of Jabez was angry. She didn't know that motherhood is an office. And out of her anger, she named her child Jabez. Every time Jabez was to be good, that office cried in the realm of the spirit. And one day Jabez was angry and said, no, I can't continue like this. 
I can tell you more than half of Africans are carrying all kinds of tragedies that the office of father and mother provided out of anger. Your father looks at you and just says, look, it will not be well with you just because that time you were in the world and you stole his shoe or you stole a goat and went to go and sell it and he looked at you and in anger, he cursed you. He said, this is how you will be like a goat all through your life. And you will think it's a joke until you find out you put a goat side by side with the way you are behaving and you see that it's exactly the same story i'm rounding up i know a gentleman that the mother cursed him and said until a rat stop stealing he will not stop stealing yes true story god is my witness he was a popular face that i knew this guy will come out of prison now as they are waving him signing in two weeks he's coming back again that prophecy secured the spirit of theft in his life comfortable the only thing that can set him free is the anointing. You see the reason why we speak over people? Yes. You speak over people to superimpose and veto the ordinances that have been communicated upon their lives. Listen, brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that these are spiritual ordinances. Fatherhood and motherhood did not end with the Old Testament. In the New Testament, a man treats his wife bad and the Bible says his heavens will be closed. This is why many fathers are going through hard life in Nigeria. I'm telling you this. This attitude of treating mothers and treating women as if they are a piece of rag. You are a father here. Please, I apologize. I have great respect for men. I'm one. I've been one all my life. So I, I don't in any way downplay men. But I want to be sincere with you. The way you treat your wife, not a woman, your wife, will determine whether your heavens will be closed or not. So you can labor. You finish insulting your wife. Call her stupid woman. You and all your five useless children. You are going for the business meeting. They call you when you are almost there and say, sir, just go back. It will work again. You say, what do you mean it will work? I just prepared my paper, the heavens. You always know when the heavens are closed because a forest becomes a fruitful vine and becomes a wilderness. depletion from as they say from grace to grass close heavens that's why the bible says until the spirit be poured upon us like rain from high then a wilderness will become a fruitful vine then a fruitful vine will be counted for a forest thank you hallelujah we're going to pray tonight and then i'm going to speak over your life I really believe in the power of prayer listen let me encourage you with these keys that i've shared with you i expect every wise young man whether you are staying with your parents or not or if if both of your parents have gone to be with the lord you have spiritual parents you have all kinds of representatives if i were you do something for your earthly parents that will provoke a blessing from them as you are going home now, don't just go as a big man, big man, no money, close heavens. Go and meet your parents. Mommy, I don't have so much money, but I made pepper soup for you. I went round the city looking for bushmeat that you like. I found it. Ah, really? My daughter, you mean bushmeat? Okay, God bless you. Ah, mommy, no. I came with this one specially. Please pray for me. What kept you and daddy for 50 years? Let that grace come. Your mother will look and say, kneel down. That's it. I can guarantee you that prayer is not noise. He said, go and make me venison. That I may bless you. You don't bless without venison. The foolishness of young people. You stroll to anybody and they don't bless me. You think it works like that? Was, I, was it just because he was hungry? It's a principle. Honor your father and your mother. I'm telling you, this is some of us. This is what will break this joblessness, these problems. Some of us, you just need to go back home and say, Mommy, I'm sorry. For five years, I have given you a lot of headache. You people don't even like seeing me. But I want to tell you that 
I got connected to a ministry and God has changed my life. I just want you to speak over my life. I don't have much, but I came with 100 Naira recharge card. They may have 10,000 Naira in their phone, but that 100 Naira is what will open you up. They will say, kneel down. Let me tell you, whether your father is a believer or not, if he speaks to you, it's an office. It will open your destiny. Are we together? Mm. You go back home and you see the people in your community loitering their life. Christmas is when people die from bike as a result of drinking. They learn how to ride bike during Christmas until they die from it. And you just sit down and say, look, three or four friends, let's see what we can do. One day, small program somewhere at the back of one football field. Put one speaker and the rest. Organize something, even if it's for the children. Instead of our little children dancing all this devilish dance that they start spoiling the hearts of these small children, gather them. Let them, even if it's biscuit and sopo or something, you have done something noble for the kingdom. And then take God on Exodus chapter 23, verse 25. You shall obey and serve me, and I will bless your bread and water. I will take sickness far away from you. There will not be barrenness in your life, and your days I will prolong. Lord, I served you during this break. I come for the blessings that follow service. Are you ready to pray? Please rise up on your feet. Hello, him Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be. together and begin to pray in the spirit and seal the remaining part of this year seal the remaining part of this year go ahead and pray that I should experience for 2017 and is still lagging in my life. The remaining days that we have, I think we should have about 20, maybe about 16 more days. Am I right? 16 days is too much for God to do a fearful miracle. Open your mouth and release your faith. Move, oh God. Move, oh God. Shabakatoka sadabakatabaladaba. In 16 days, you can still confirm your word concerning my life. <speaking in Spanish> Follow us 
as we pray, Lord, I release my faith for ministry, for business, for career. You can still give me the job. You can still give me the promotion. I can still recover everything that was lost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want us to pray a very serious prayer right now. Most of us are going back maybe to spend the break with our loved ones or around. I'd like you to pray. When Jonah entered a boat people started weeping and losing everything because one man in disobedience was in the boat he made the boat unusually heavy and was about to capsize but when the act of god entered the house of a man called obed edom without prayer in 90 days three months everything changed i like you to pray and say lord i am a living tabernacle as i go home or wherever it is that i'll be going to i represent your possibilities i represent the act of god go ahead and pray i go home to smash the works of darkness every activity of divination every activity of darkness over my loved ones in the name of jesus as i step my feet i decree and i declare by the power of the holy ghost the heavens are open unto me In the name of Jesus, I challenge every force. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't be tired of praying. I want us to challenge three demonic forces over our family. Listen. One is the spirit of sickness and infirmity. Two, the spirit of poverty and hardship. Three, the spirit of death. Lift your voice and curse them. Lift your voice and curse them. In the name of Jesus, I represent the government of heaven over my life and my family. I command the spirit of death. Take your hands off my loved ones. There will be no sound of mourning. In the name of Jesus, pray. I come against necromancy. I come against manipulations of the consolations to destroy the life of any one of my loved ones. They are covered. I lift the standard of the blood. I lift the standard of the blood. Shake it, take it, take it, take it. I lift the standard of the blood. No death, not by accident, not by terrorism, not by plane crash. I cause sickness. I cause infirmity. I cause sickness. We cause cancer. We cause arthritis. We cause hepatitis. We cause every killer disease. Every terminal disease. Take your hands off our loved ones. We cause the spirits of poverty and hardship. Stealing resources from our loved ones. Causing conflict in homes. Kaboto Sekete. Pray, challenge the spirit. I come against you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? 
I like you to program favor that as I step out all through from now till January when I come back is going to be favor whether you have an uncle or not financial favor all kinds of open doors open your mouth and declare it create it I command favor in the name of Jesus I call for the help us for my family help us for my destiny Lord I receive I receive I receive all kinds of favor all kinds of favor Favor, men are rising, men are rising in the name of Jesus. Favor. Hallelujah. Listen, I want you to believe me. We are rounding up. But you see, not many people in this life have truly encountered favor. Favor is an experience that happens once, but the result continues without stop. We are going to pray this prayer again. Listen, the hardship in many of our families, even salary, will not cure it. Is that true? There are some of us now, if you get a job and you are giving your loved ones 300,000 per month, even after five years, it will not solve the problem. 15 people in the house, only one person is working, is earning 20,000. That's a cost. When I say favor, I'm not saying look at your employer to give you one bag of rice or one of your rich uncle in America. Take your mind away from any man. Don't add faces. Your own is to just create with your words. Are you ready to pray? For me and for my family, Lord, surprise us. Surprise us before December 31st. Lord, do something that has not been done. A major dimension of favor. Pray. No matter what kind you have seen, provoke another. Provoke another. In the name of Jesus, I create it. I call it for. I call it for in my life. I call it for in this ministry. I call it for for my loved ones. I call it for strange favor between now and 31st December. Strange favor. Hallelujah. We'll soon round up. I'd like you to pray. Listen. One of the major reasons why there is trouble in our homes is because someone there has not given his life to Christ and therefore does not subscribe to the value system of the kingdom. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It is terrible to have someone in a family that does is has not given his life to Christ or is not interested in being passionate especially if they have authority over you because they will force you to stay in their mode you pray for 30 minutes they say are you the first to be born again I have been born again I like you to pray two things Lord massive encounters I like you to pray for your loved ones that don't know Jesus Lord this is this is the season they must encounter Jesus lift your voice and pray I pray for my brother I pray for my sister I pray for my father I pray for my mother I pray for my uncle I pray for my step siblings pray pray Lord we are tired of the challenges that their lack of encountering Christ is bringing to us financial troubles spiritual troubles they continue to become doorways and portals through which darkness comes in to destroy and invade give them an encounter 
give them visions give them dreams in the name of Jesus break their pride oh God give them solid encounters encounters with your power change them change them change them some of them have vowed that they will never give their lives to Christ I like you to pray and say Lord in your majesty prove them wrong prove them wrong hallelujah one last prayer and then we are done for tonight listen all these prayer points I'm giving you when you go back pray them especially this prayer of salvation I can tell you this with the little experience I have counseling families 90% of the problem is that there is someone who is comfortably a gateway for Satan to destroy people notice how Satan does it in every family he must search for somebody one bad boy one bad girl or maybe our fathers our mothers everyone tries to press into God you just hear that police are calling you go to the police station they will tell you they've caught your brother stealing a laptop the bill is four hundred thousand, and before you know it the money you have saved that's a devourer all this stealing you see young people do especially all these young guys steal something shamefully come and put their parents in trouble the money that should be the school fees of five people you have to take it and go and settle police is the devil what about the young boys that have not reached age of driving they smuggle out a car and go somewhere an expensive car they just bought with their friends get drunk and smash the car these are all the schemings of darkness many parents today are almost dying of depression because of the stubbornness of their children a lady jumps the fence and disappears one week nobody has seen her they are all afraid they start contacting the police paying money and then she strolls in after eight days and say why are you looking for me it's the devil A smart young gentleman about to graduate they will go and find him under the gutter because he went for a, a nonsense party Christmas party that is the birth of Jesus Christ drinks to stupor and the friends stri strip him of phone and everything and they leave him on the ground they come and carry him in the morning arrest him in the police station and the whole family spends Christmas going to the station I like you to say the devil is a liar I'm, I'm showing you these are the things in in many families Satan does not want to see everybody rising you see a gentleman the only graduate and because he's a giver a wicked accident will happen and just destroy both of his legs or one kind of devilish sickness where there will be chemotherapy or something that is eating over 70 to 100 thousand per week in six months it has dried the finances of the family you are my strength when I am weak you are the treasure that I seek you are my all Seeking you as a precious truth Not to give up, I'll be a friend You are my own Hallelujah Pride Pride Number two, quickly The second reason why people do not experience The outstretched arm of God in their lives is ignorance and disobedience to God's principles please listen very carefully ignorance and disobedience to God's principles the systems of the kingdom the kingdom of God and the dealings of God with man is broken into systems listen carefully the system of God's dealing with man represents his modus operandi 
as far as certain outcomes are desired are we together now it is part of the assignment of every leader in partnership every pastor businessman career person every believer in partnership with the holy spirit to explore the systems of god and understand the keys that he has apportioned to be responsible for certain outcomes in our lives please listen not every key opens every door that you are holding keys does not mean the door you want will open no we have been given the keys of the kingdom and we must know the systems that are responsible please pay attention to what i'm telling you there is a system in the dealing of god with men that is responsible for longevity there is a system that is responsible for the impartation of the life and the power of God in a man. There is a system that is responsible for wealth and prosperity. There is a system that is responsible for favor. There is a system that is responsible for defense. That when men and the powers of darkness rise against a man, there is a system a man can operate with God that can build a shield of resistance mysteriously you walk out of things that should have killed you as though the devil does not exist it is not luck everybody says systems if you do not understand the systems of god give us ephesians chapter 4 please ephesians chapter 4 verse 18 the bible says having their understanding darkened listen carefully having their understanding darkened then it says being alienated taken apart from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them when the understanding of a man is darkened you can be alienated from the reality of God's life so you will read it in the Bible you will even confess it but your life will be barren of that experience because there is a system are we together on earth there is a system by which men grow correct from a baby to an adult there is a system there is a system with which a woman is able to take child and give birth there is even a time range for it so it is in the realm of the spirit the ignorance of believers not just in knowing what we want we all know what we want but the keys of the kingdom designed by the wisdom of god to deliver that result so what we do in the body of christ largely is guesswork we apply at random several scriptural principles that we hope will address our issues of concern and the danger is if and when they do address that issue we cannot reproduce it because we do not know which one exactly produced the result so we call the blood of Jesus we invoke the name of Jesus we call the word we sow seeds we take communion and then we do all kinds of things we pray and then we get the result now the danger is we cannot teach another person there is an exact system that is responsible for what you and i are looking for tonight hmm. are we together you heard the testimonies of some of our loved ones here look at this kind of results there is something responsible the Bible says they are life to those who find them and then health to their flesh. It didn't say they are life to Christians. No. No. That understanding that because it is in the Bible, your life should experience it is deception and fallacy. Between thus saith the Lord and it came to pass is your participation engaging the systems of God accordingly. That's what is responsible for the delivery of the outcomes in our lives. I've said it here again Satan is never afraid of the word read your Bible there is no place in scripture that records that Satan is afraid of the word Satan is afraid of your understanding your partnership with the word is the dread of Satan in fact the Bible says speaking about the sower and the soils it says that Satan cometh immediately and takes the word and the word does not react on him because the word in itself is barren and unprofitable it takes the faith and the understanding of the believers to give life to the word to now be able to speak the word of god is a bank of potentials activated through faith and your faith is the summation of your understanding proven by your steps 
first your understanding then your steps your understanding is evidence of your conviction are we together now I've spent my life studying the systems of the kingdom and I still do Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15 please help us let's rush tonight Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15 it says the labor of the foolish weary at how many it didn't say where is one from the group every one of them why because he knoweth not how to go to the city he didn't say there is no road he knoweth not 60 verse 1 of isaiah says arise shine amplified says arise from the frustration and the prostration that situations and circumstances have kept you he says rise to a new light arise shine why for your light is come not that your light is available it's always been there but the day it comes to you it has capacity to cause you to arise please hear me believers God is not a charmer he's not a magician there is always an engaging of the systems of God fear is a product of ignorance or inaccurate understanding of the systems of God the antidote to fear is not just casting the spirit away there is the spirit of fear but there is there are activities that results to fear naturally an understanding of the systems of God so this is what we desire but do we know do you know for instance believers that in the economy of God with men there is a way that men can receive bad things that leave them we call it restoration we all know and we all agree that restoration is a possibility in God's dealings with man but do you understand the system there is an exact spiritual system that produces that outcome are we together now yes there is a system scattered in scripture that distinguishes men and lifts them up listen let me tell you something the word of God is only profitable when we understand our roles in making the outcome happen the word of God is only profitable when we understand our roles the summation of what the Bible calls faith is first understanding this is where the challenge is our understanding being faulty being incomplete being unfruitful so it is incapable of delivering the results that we expect and therein lies the power of darkness leveraging on our inaccurate understanding of the systems of God and then we mock God there are people who have come with several situations tonight and within seconds we've not been away for over a week I mean it's, it's been a tour ride from the west down to the south and here and it's been an amazing time watching all the miracles and the things that have happened you know I have wondered wondered just like those who receive I have wondered at how easy it is to get God's hand having the readiness to judge all disobedience if and only when our obedience is complete ignorance truly empowers Satan in fact there is a class of the demonic cadre called rulers of darkness their dominion is activated whenever there is no light we must contend for accurate understanding there is no one in school to sponsor me I am alone so you say but there is a provision in the dealings of God with men where he can raise strangers he said it strangers will feed your flock keep the promise but find out the system that commits God to making it an epistle in your life here and now otherwise we will continue to mock ourselves again and again God said it but we may never see it in our lives someone listening to me here inside outside across the nations of the earth will need to realize that this is the key it's not God it is our lack of participation to produce the outcomes that we desire say amen this is the second reason why 
many people remain perpetually in failure and defeat let me give us something isaiah 31 is a scripture that blessed me so much and i think it will bless you verse 1 to 3 those who depend on the strength of men the strategies of men listen to what the bible says woe to them that go down to egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many it says and in horsemen because they are very strong but they look not to the holy one of israel neither seek their god let's go to verse 3 verse 3 please it says now these egyptians that you claim are so formidable they are men no are we together now it says and not god and their horses are flesh there is a limit to which they can defend you it says and not spirit when the lord shall stretch out his hands listen both he that helpeth shall fall and he that is helped now this is an ancient language shall also fall down two of them shall do what if god does not help you and your destiny helper together so it is never from men i've taught you this all every good and perfect gift comes from above through men to you from god through men to you so your prayer is not to men the god of all flesh that can manipulate things according to his will from god through men to you when it becomes from men that begins the cycle of tragedy from your life anything god cannot give me let no man claim he can give me i know we say yes sir but we don't believe it it shows on our our desperation calling the attention of men you are my last hope sam if you don't pick my call i'm dead that's a man who does not know god because he said if you will not praise me it is still within my power to raise up things that should not do that god is only limited by how much we trust him his wisdom is multifaceted has the capacity to invent new formulas of communicating your breakthrough to you your assignment is to trust him enough who is like him lion and the lamb seated on the throne mountains bow down every ocean rose to the lord of lords never never allow your appetite or your perception of the ability of men and human strategies to help you to outrun and push away the fact that you know God is faithful I know you're a businessman and I've read every business book but by and large is only a channel every good and perfect gift comes from above I know you went to school but let me tell you something if God does not speak a word on your behalf your certificate can be a piece of paper on this earth as sad as the recession is it has brought so many arrogant people to their knees men who think God is limited by their perceptions and whatever it is no God is mighty he's not scratching his head in heaven wondering what to do with believers his wisdom is so infinite it reinvents itself to manipulate answers to men regardless of the circumstances you are God alone from before time began you are on your throne you are God The next time a man tells you I will not help you you are in trouble thank him don't cry go back to God and say Lord how many men did you say are on earth six billion let your wisdom your infinite wisdom that can raise up stones 
stones. That can raise up stones to praise and glorify him. I will never trust the strategy of men above God. I love and know and fear him too much to be that foolish. That a man comes and says, look, Ejimi, tomorrow I'm going to change your life. Just because you have five billion in your account, that's a joke. Is it not until that man wakes up from the bed in the morning? Listen, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not teaching you dishonor. Remember, I've taught you the gift of men. I'm showing you the depravity, the falsehood, the waste of time that is committed in making men God. This God is a mighty God. Your trust in him puts pressure on his integrity. Pressure on his integrity. That's what brought some of you here from so far. You have put pressure on his integrity. I assure you he will not disappoint you. Hallelujah. All through scripture, the Bible is full of God's promises. And then attached to them are conditions that men must satisfy as a proof of their faith in God. God cannot assume you trust him. So he creates a condition so that you're activating that condition is proof of your partnership that I agree with you. It would be costly for me to take this water and then tell Pastor Jimmy, I want to force you to take. No, 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 no. I can't assume he's thirsty. Are we together? So I say, Jimmy, if you are thirsty, I have given you access to this. You're picking the water is proof that one, you are thirsty, but number two, that you believe I'm not a liar. Now, if you want to come and pick this water and the protocol stops you, it, you, have, you have obeyed, you have put pressure on my own integrity and so I come in and I tell him no, I instructed him. He's acting based on his trust in me. He's not acting based on rebellion. The problem is never the devil. The problem is our fear. Alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them number three quickly the third reason why people experience failure defeat perpetually is demonic oppressions demonic oppressions first john chapter 5 verse 19 demonic oppressions we live in a world that is full of demonic activities and the Bible did not leave us in the dark as to the reality that there are forces of darkness that attempt to contend with the liberty of the saints. It says, and we know that we are of God. Read on. And how many? Not Nigeria. The whole world does what? Lieth in wickedness. Like you say, my child is lying on a carpet. The whole world lies on a mystery of wickedness. The condition to be a potential victim of this is that you are born of a woman the moment you arrive here that's all are we together now you know several people say who did i offend that all this trouble is all those things are they are just cultural ways of trying to manage pain the whole world lieth in wickedness the moment jesus was born as a baby all of a sudden when a star came at the east herod the spirit of the antichrist began to walk in herod and they wanted to kill jesus even in heaven there was war he said there was war in heaven a woman i saw a mystery in heaven a woman was about to give birth to a child and a dragon came and stood waiting to eat the child and the bible says the earth fought for the woman and took the woman to a safe place Hear me brothers and sisters the bible says forever oh lord thy word is settled it tells you the location in it takes faith and the operation of god's word for it to be settled in your life it is settled in heaven hence the dexterity and the order in heaven but on earth there are still forces contending with the purposes of god and the bible tells us in ephesians chapter 6 please give it to us verse 12 
Ephesians 6 and then verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Listen, I want you to listen to my message against spiritual intelligence. That message has blessed so many people. I was talking with my mother, Jimmy, today and uh, my mother almost made me cry. And she said she was listening to spiritual intelligence so much and making several decisions in her life based on that. Spiritual intelligence will teach you not to waste your time. Being angry with men, fighting men, because every man, every man is just, is a physical form being manipulated by a reality from the realm of the spirit you have to know this it is never about your in-law it is never about your son it is never about your daughter no no wasting time on men will make you hate people you cannot love there is a revelation that sponsors love so even if people speak against you you know that they are not speaking of their own Peter tried to rebuke Jesus that you will not die on the cross he said Satan get thee behind me and he said Peter Satan desired Peter said which Satan we came here together satan desired to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen your brethren because he will look for them too are we together he says but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against the spiritual wickedness in heavenly places paul himself was not he did not leave the church in limbo as to the reality that at every point in your life there are forces that will attempt to mock god here's a revelation god gave me recently every sickness every oppression is like a letter satan is writing to god he uses men like the canvas and says I am making a mockery of men to prove that your word is not true are we together now so when i trust god and i still come and i'm sick and the sickness is eating me it's not about you satan does not even care he is trying to use men the highest of god's creation to make a statement to the heavens that bowing down you did not do i am now using your image to compel creation to bow down to me and so when God finds a witness men and women who represent the systems of God who represent portals that manifest the multifaceted possibilities of God in the earth they now begin to rewrite in the lives of men watch this so this lady come darling this lady has cancer it's eating her up that's a letter from satan it is never about the cancer satan does not care he is he is contented with the statement and the reaction of creation to him by reason of this are we together so when she comes for a miracle service like this god begins to rejoice not because he just became powerful finally an intercourse between need and supply listen every time hear me every time god heals a man it was not that night he planned to heal the man he had been navigating the need and the faith of that man to the grace the unction level it takes to produce that miracle and when two of them collide there must be a miracle i've taught you something listen oh let me not go ahead of myself i'm enjoying myself here very seriously listen this lady cancer now i've prayed for her and she's not healed that's a double message you see that that message now her faith begins to fail her because she's saying but but i mean does that mean my situation is different and she goes to god lord i love you i love you but then she begins to think and somebody comes to say look there's one man somewhere oh, i'm advising you all this your jesus thing me too i'm a christian i gave my life to christ before you were born i'm only telling you this what is there to just go carry one goat i can even give you half of the money you see it is a statement satan uses men their situations is like the pen he writes a letter to heaven watch the ones you claim you died for barren of your faithfulness yet you study from scripture 
I have been young and now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, not you see it back for bread. Then Satan comes to write a letter. That's why God is searching for men. He's not searching for men to give them titles. He's finding space in the earth through men. So that the multifaceted dimensions of his possibilities can be made manifest. Now, if this lady supernaturally gets healed, like the gentleman, look at the guy that, 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 um, that came back to life. 25 people immediately. 25 people because a dead body came back to life. You can't deny that. Are we together? That's a statement. Brothers and sisters, tonight, my father will write another statement. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. See, God does not just write anyhow. He writes in a way that he must force you to read it. His miracles are notable. Ask Moses. He made the bush to burn in such a way Moses could not ignore it. That's the same way somebody will walk out of this meeting and all of a sudden doors opening, 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 opening. Hallelujah. Opening. That's the God we serve. So when miracles are not just a proof that a man is anointed, that's the last reason for a miracle. Miracles are a message. It's a reply from God back to men and to the gates of hell. I am still faithful. The lion, the lamb, my benevolence is still in force. I am still good. My mercy endures forever. And he uses men. Sometimes you see in his wisdom, he just allows the devil to exhaust his knowledge. Then he comes in so cheaply and lifts a man and says, Satan, how about this? When you understand this, hear me. You will passionately pursue the presence and the power of God, not for fame. You are seeking to give God space. There is a statement that God needs to write to principalities and powers. They mock God in our lives. Are we together? This is what happens. Because it's difficult. Brothers and sisters, we are humans. When your life has a track record of perpetual failure, it will test your faith. And that's when Satan comes and tries to say, where is your God? You are 39 years as a lady. You have loved God all your life. No marriage. And I'm here believing my life anyhow. I'm still married, but another man still wants to add another marriage to me. Look at two of us. Brothers and sisters, they are not speaking on their own. It's a letter. So it is good to give God thanks in that situation. But it's best to give God thanks in victory. Are we together? Yeah. Thank you. Demonic forces. They exist, they are real, and they have made nonsense. First Thessalonians 2:18. Please let's hurry up. First Thessalonians 2:18. The apostle was speaking, and he opened us up to something very, very profound. I want us to read together. Ready? One to read. Wherefore we would have come to you, even I, your breakthrough. But what happened? Help me please. Once and again, your breakthrough would have come to you. Your prayers answered already. But Satan hindered us. Satan can attempt to hinder men from meeting men. Satan can attempt to hinder things from meeting men. Are we together now? It's part of the reasons why we pray. We pray because in the place of prayer, we create our own climate and we command the forces of darkness. We enforce the victory of Christ and we clear the air for believers to receive the fullness of the blessings of God. The last reason, very quickly, and then we'll pray. Why do people experience limitations in their lives? They trivialize and ignore the place of spiritual empowerment. This is the last reason. 
the last reason i've given you four reasons why people remain in perpetual defeat they trivialize and ignore for many the place of spiritual empowerment ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 we celebrate the anointing of the holy spirit in this place not just the ministry of the spirit as you know we're on a series the holy spirit he said finally my brethren haven't told you all these other things finally my brethren be strong in the lord be strong in the lord and in the power of his the word might there means his resources his resources the power that comes with his resources there are arsenals there are mysteries there are supplies of graces and possibilities that make god god and the bible says we should be strong in that the power our access to those things is what gives us strength in this kingdom are we together now there are powers of darkness that will arise and contend with believers once and again psalm 66 verse 3 psalm 66 verse 3 let's read one to go say unto god how terrible art thou in thy ways help me please through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves brothers and sisters it takes power to reign in this kingdom it takes power to reign in this wicked world it will take power for you to rise and not compromise yet prosper it takes power it's more it takes more than sincerity in a wicked and a depraved world are you going to bribe no i will stand in for truth that means there is no promotion for you and you can remain there for decades are you from so 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 state no i'm not no you are not qualified for this position human sentiments it takes power to defy the wickedness of men it takes power hallelujah it takes power it takes power to build a ministry much more than wisdom it takes the ability of god he says rabbi john 3 verse 1 we know that thou art a man nicodemus seeing the mighty works of jesus christ they criticized him in the day but he smuggled his way to jesus in the night and said rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these things except god be with him the anointing of the Holy Spirit is God's authorization upon a man to represent him. God's authorization. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is God's ability. Listen, the capacity to produce God's result, God's dimension of result can only be produced by his dimension of power and grace. We trivialize the anointing because we have been taught that the anointing is for men of God and since I'm not being called into the fivefold ministry I do not need the anointing no brothers and sisters hear me the anointing the anointing I've said it again I want it to become a revelation in you that the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference the difference between a man who rises out of death and out of every challenge is the anointing a thriving ministry and a struggling one the anointing a thriving career and a struggling one the anointing the anointing will be the difference between your next level and where you are now don't trivialize it don't say it is unnecessary no the anointing is God's advantage in the life of the believer it truly is an advantage I think it was the last set of school of ministry students I was teaching them when we were doing pneumatology I was teaching them about the anointing and I said this is our wicked world people ask you who is your father he's an iron bender who is your mother she sells a car somewhere in the road no you cannot rise we are victims of the wickedness 
the sentiments the ethno-religious biases of men in a world where people want you to bring something you need the advantage not an advantage brothers and sisters the anointing can take you where anything can take anybody the anointing others may get there because of their connections others may get there because uncle so 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 went and once you are there they ask you how did you come and then you laugh God's ability God's ability is working in me is working in me is God's ability God's ability is working in me is working in me that will be your testimony is God's ability is God's ability working in me the anointing will always produce supernatural results you've heard me say it if it is the Lord's doing then it must be marvelous in our eyes if it is a man's doing it is natural and logical but brothers and sisters when your result defies the natural progression there is another agency other than you when your results in any area of life listen they called Jesus they said he was casting out devils by Beelzebub he said if I use Beelzebub the prince of demons by whom do your fathers their fathers were casting out devils they fraternized with the realm of the spirit access powers higher than a human power and were producing results that statement shows that no man can do supernatural things without the assistance of a dimension higher than that which you know yes yes in this day and age brothers and sisters the world is waiting for supernatural outcomes you don't just tell somebody be healed that's arrogance without the anointing now let me show you something i've taught you this again and again but i feel like doing it let me use a thousand naira if you would permit me please look at this because so many people really do not understand the operation of the anointing i want you to learn this please by the grace of God and by the privilege of his grace, I can tell you I understand the workings of the anointing. I want you to pay attention and listen closely. I may not boast of any other thing, but I can tell you I understand how this thing works. Listen, the anointing works like money. Watch this. If I give you, hey Jimmy, 1,000 Naira, do you know that there are many things this can buy? 1,000 Naira can buy this, but 1,000 Naira cannot buy a car. Are we together now so when if your desire is to buy a car you need multiples of 1,000 it is good that you have 1,000 but it is not sufficient to draw to your life the result this is how the anointing is don't say I'm anointed it must be to the level that is capable I thought this thing is energy physics defines power as work done per unit time that's the definition of the anointing God's ability that is dissipated per unit time to produce supernatural results that's the anointing listen if I try to lift this it doesn't mean I don't have energy it means the energy dissipated per unit time is small so I need another agency to assist me is that true believers this is how it is so it is not that the name of Jesus is there, it's not working. It is not that the anointing is not working. The situation that you are confronted with, this is why grace and peace is multiplied. Because there are situations that defy that current level. So he says, grace and peace be multiplied to you. Why is it multiplied? How God anointed Jesus, Acts 10, 30. Look at the extent to which he anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power let me show you how to be a blessing when you contend with the spirit to carry a dimension of grace and unction sufficient to solve most if not all the problems that you will find this is how you'll be a blessing 
if Dangote comes here now and decides to give everybody one one million how do you, how many of you know that's not a prayer point for him because it is within his capacity are we together if koinonia decides to give everybody here one one million we'll have a problem somewhere correct not because we don't have money it is the limit of our capacity so it's not when when this guy has a problem it's like a shop there is a dimension of anointing required to solve it so when you come to help him it's not just that you laid hands he may even fall down but the money is short what do you need more 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 of the same thing not more of a different thing more of what the same thing so Benihin can climb the stage and he's not even held the mic and 40 people rise out of the wheelchair you see that's the anointing upon his life makes him see clearer the might and the possibilities of God when you are not heavily anointed you create a wrong picture of God because you struggle for little results and it looks like that's how much God tried to release that result but watch another man who comes with grace and unction and you watch ease as a testimony it's called capacity the anointing makes God look limitless in the affairs of men this is why regardless of the results here and there that God produces we still remain in the secret place because there is more brothers and sisters there are people scattered here tonight if I ask everybody to come and hold the mic people will not travel from end to end there are people following from over 45 nations of the world they are not sitting down and wasting their time no no people want solutions now a man of god gets up here called joshua selman i would be a wicked man if i have not stayed with god sufficient enough at least at the level of the growth to be able to partner with the holy spirit that's why we cry for his mercy because there are many situations that we need results beyond our current levels of dealings with God. And we need the mercy of God to superimpose the current level of grace that we carry. That's why sometimes I tell you that God does not heal people just through a man's faith. He switches to the covenant that that man has with him. And it becomes a platform upon which he reaches men. Are we together? Tonight, let me tell you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that there is grace to cause your mountains to look like valleys. Yes, yes. It doesn't take time. It only takes time when an insufficient dimension of the anointing presents it. Learn this about the anointing. The anointing can greatly misrepresent God. It's like a television that is not well tuned. It will make you think the producers were that poor until you take the same video to a clearer HD television. And that's when you watch the artistry of those people. The anointing can misrepresent the capacity of God. Hallelujah. I take time to teach like this because the miracles and all this will not take time once your heart is aligned to receive then you will receive miracles upon miracles are we together this is how he gets glory when he finds men who are heavily anointed please hear me never be caught up by the results you currently have now no matter how great I tell you you ask the Lord my work with God is as if I don't have an iota of his anointing in my life there is a standard and there is a capacity that I'm working with God and I seek to get I have seen them in dreams and visions and I did not see this current level we're trusting God for levels where before koinonia starts before the first prayer point half of the people who come sick are already healed completely one woman one of our mothers i met a new mother 
new wonderful mother in Portacot. Lovely people, those of you from Portacot, I know they are listening to me now. They are following me. Lovely, lovely woman. I love you with all my heart. And um, the whole family, I mean, they are just into this ministry with their heart. She donated her car and everything for them to use for the program. And she shared a testimony, I think it was yesterday, that touched me. She had been having some kind of respiratory problems. And so when they picked me from the airport, her children insisted that she would sit down at that same place. And that woman said she just sat down and the children drove her home. Brothers and sisters, that was the end of it. Now listen, listen. When you understand the anointing, there is something interesting about it. When you understand the anointing and you are heavily anointed, the more heavy you are anointed, the will, your will, plays little role in its release. It becomes wherever. Ask the woman with the issue of blood. Jesus did not even, listen now, he was not planning. She just touched him and Jesus said, who touched me? The anointing didn't say, Jesus, can I flow? No. So you can be in a restaurant, you are eating, and all of a sudden, now, you will never believe what I'm saying if you are casually anointed. If you truly are anointed, you become a blessing. You greet somebody, just shake his hand, and that day he has more customers than he can ever imagine. Now, even you, you do not know till he tells you an effulgence of spiritual possibilities. You, your life has become a gateway and a portal revealing a dimension of possibility that is not affordable to the natural man. I welcome you tonight to this place where God has chosen by his spirit to reveal the multifaceted dimensions of his grace and glory. Please rise up on your feet. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh. I want you to just pray two prayer points from the depth of your heart. Number one, I'd like you to insist and say, Lord, I release my faith. There is no challenge I came here with tonight that will return back. Go ahead and pray. Prophesy, declare it. I wave every captivity goodbye. Jesus is Lord. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hala prakato sete katapanda shabrakadabala. Shikete paratos kapratas kalabasya. Pray. I believe in the mighty God. Dera na 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 shela na. Shikadabala kataprakato sekete. Shepres kete shalabanda katai. I have found David my servant and with my holy oil have I anointed him. It's the realm of your glory. It's the realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power moving in this place. We're in the presence of angels with God's glory on the wings. And like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing You are 
are holy You are holy You are holy You are holy One last prayer point. Father, take me to a new dimension. There is always more. Lift your voice and pray. Take me to a new dimension. Take me to a new dimension. are you praying take me to a new level let me not need to tell people that I came before your presence let there be an evidence let there be a testimony Nina Ka wo yabo Sarki salama Nina Ka wo yabo never be the same I want to pray for you listen I want you to trust God please hear me especially for the visitors here I want you to trust God that the forces and the yokes that stand between you and your destiny you have to believe that they will live now are we together? I want you to believe God. There are people already receiving their deliverances and miracles. I want to pray for you now. My heart is heavy because in this season and in this time, God wants to set people free. Some of you may not know the causes of the situations, the challenges, the things you go through. You have prayed, you have fasted. God has brought you here tonight and he will give you a dramatic miracle. Are we together now? Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Jesus, the presence of God is Listen, I want to pray for you. I see a writing. I just see a writing in the realm of the spirit. And I see great breakthrough. This is what I see. Great breakthrough. There is a grace that is coming on people now. The Lord is starting off with us tonight. Bringing strange breakthrough to people. I want to pray now. At the count of three. In the name that is above all names. I decree and declare. 
in the name of the Lord God whose I am right now at the count of three I release that grace I command every devil standing on the way to anyone's breakthrough I command that you leave right now in the name of Jesus at the count of three I want you to shout the name Jesus one two three go now go now bring them up shake it take a inside and outside that fire of the Holy Ghost shake it take it up bring them out right now in the name of Jesus my God I see deliverances happening to people by the spirit of the living God deliverances happening to people right now right now right now bring them out please in the name of Jesus outside overflow one I see a ministry of angels strong ministry of angels bring them out please I come in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I establish victory victory I command it break through every source of darkness defying the word of the Lord I bless the word of God upon your hallelujah lift your hands my God I still see these breakthroughs I'm seeing doors opening in the realm of the spirit listen I'm seeing at least 17 people 17 people I'm going to pray and the power of God will come upon you strange doors opening right now in the name of Jesus I declare by the count of three one two three open now open now I command it I declare it now now open doors by the Spirit of God open doors open doors my God doors opening over lives opening over destinies opening by the Spirit of God by the Spirit of God and pray the Lord is showing me people here with strange delays you love God but strange delays I'm seeing like arrows in the spirit and this is not from darkness it will come upon you once it comes upon you know that that delay will end right now in the name of Jesus the Lord is asking me to stretch my hands as I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus Lord where are they men and women who have been delayed strangely right now right now right now I command that light and power that light and power ending delays now mighty in this place Mighty in this place, you are mighty in this place. Mighty in this place, you are mighty in our lives. Mighty in our lives. Mighty in our
I'm seeing something strange in the spirit coming upon sisters. I'm seeing a strange grace for speed. Just sisters, sisters, I'm seeing this. And the Lord is asking me to prophesy it. As soon as I prophesy it, there is a strange unction coming on ladies for strange speed. I see this in the realm of the spirit. Now, Lord, I place the word of God upon this prophecy. And I declare, ladies, step into speed. Now, supernatural speed. Run like Elijah. I command it, I decree it. In the name of Jesus. Strength speed. Strength speed. Strength speed. It's coming on you now. Like the dew of heaven. Coming on you now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is opening my eyes to a vision now and I'm seeing keys being given to people. Keys. Listen. Keys. It will come on you like fire. I see keys. These keys are solutions and strategies. Solutions and strategies. Solutions and strategies. You will help me shout that name Jesus again. I see keys being handed over to people according to the grace and mercy of God. Now Lord, I pray that even as you have shown me, whoever should be a recipient of this spiritual blessing, I decree and declare that it will come upon their lives now. Are you ready? At the count of three. Get ready now, my God, my God, my God. One, two, three. Take this kids. Take this kids. So break it. And the people say, Holy, 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 many of you wonder when you see me do this particular thing where I just mention a state and the Lord begins to touch people from that state it's a sign and wonder you see these things they are operations of the spirit because the Lord is opening my eyes right now I'm seeing a map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the hand of God on south 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 that entire region now now all those who come from that region south 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 a miracle Ending captivities by the Spirit of the Living God. Holy, 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 there is somebody in overflow too. You are holding a picture. You are holding photos. Please come. Overflow too by the roadside. Let the person come. Let the person come quickly. You are holding a picture. The Lord is showing me someone. Please let 
let that person whoever he is or she is please quickly you are holding a picture run come you are wearing like blue uh, is it blue or black now who is that come holy holy don't worry mama i'm going to pray for you where is your daughter ma no mic i'm looking at you hold on is this her i'm looking at you and the holy spirit is taking me and i'm in kano where is she she's at kano where is she that's what i'm saying she's at kano and the lord why 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 are you holding her picture is she have uh, up to now she have never got get married uh -uh. and this, this is, day she's sick this is what i'm saying this is what god wants to destroy because i'm seeing her in kano and you are standing in for her yes i'm supposed to pray for those outside but i saw this and the lord is saying i should minister to you go and tell her that the lord brings her life this sickness is over <laughs> hallelujah sir where are you coming from Mina, niger state niger state thank the lord because your car would have had an accident on the way coming and the lord has brought you deliverance is this your family yes, sir. this is your family yes, sir. one two three four how many children what you have? have you stopped giving birth do you think this is all i'm looking in a vision and i'm seeing one more a baby girl yes. after this yes. hold my hand sir but the lord is going to i'm seeing you have serious problem with finances very serious you are not a lazy man even you you cannot explain how you got into this kind of trouble but i want to pray for you because the lord is saying i should release you from this hold my hand sir i bring you life in the name of jesus christ you will go back and return with a strange this man's life will change like day and night in the name of jesus christ mama please come i don't know this woman but i'm asked to pray for you i look at you in the realm of the spirit and i'm seeing two hands like this you're a woman of prayer this is what i'm seeing in the realm of the spirit look at me ma you love god sincerely but many things are going around they are scattered in your life and you have been asking can god come can god step in even when you were there you were praying that prayer i had you praying and the lord is saying i should tell you he's giving you rest today He's giving you supernatural rest madam please stand up please stand up man please stand up where are you coming from madam it's from sabon gary you are coming hold my hands in the name of jesus the son of the living god your life will turn around and that of your family this is by the spirit of god by the anointing of the holy spirit in the name of jesus christ have i prayed for you darling come in the name of jesus i end captivity from your life by the power of the holy spirit right now in the name of jesus i end captivity don't worry i mustn't speak to you as i lay my hands on you i want to believe there's someone you are outside your baby is sick run with the person and come now you are outside your baby is sick run with the person and come now daddy sir can i pray for you sir i'm going to pray for you and the lord is going to give you peace and the lord is going to raise people to help you now sincerely speaking i want to be honest with you it is not within my power to stop you from getting married i we generally can only advise because you see let me teach you something especially as a pastor there are people who are following us from 45 nations of the world and when you are ministering sensitive things like this um they are listening and every territory has laws are we together now things are a bit flexible in nigeria but if i were in america and i'm talking to this man like this and saying don't marry another wife the son can go and sue me or the ministry so this is the reason why it's not maybe lack of faith are we together sir it is not within my power and i have no right to judge you i can only declare the counsel of god and pray for you um this is very important when you are speaking to people although by the spirit it is important to be wise in your communication so that you do not say things that will bring you serious problem mama you are praying and you are still telling god there is one more thing you want to tell me i'm hearing your prayers come what is it give her the mic is that true you are standing there and you are praying 
and you are saying you wish that I can call you again, there is one more issue. What is the issue? Marriage my daughter's. Your daughter's marriage. Uh, ma Mama, let's let's pray. If that is the issue. You are a good woman. I want to pray for your daughters and God said that's not what you need. Hold it. What you need is destiny help us. Mama, as I'm looking at you now, they're about to throw you out of the house because your rent has expired. Give her the mic. Is that true? Yes. Sir. You need somebody to help you. Yes. Sir. Seriously. Yes, if not, the time will come. Even what to eat will become an issue. The Lord said I should tell you forget this issue of marriage. Hmm? The major issue is the ministry of destiny help us. Amen. Lord, send people. Amen. You see, we must pray that God will grant us grace so that we can help our mothers. It's a terrible thing for a woman at this age to be praying as if she never had a child, as if she never trained anybody. That's why we cause the spirit of delay that makes people to be established very late. Now, according to scripture, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. But sadly, being as the situation is, we must be able to turn back and be a blessing to these our loved ones. A woman like this at her age should not be going around trying to look for food to eat again. I pray that your loved ones will not look for food to eat. That God himself will empower you and establish you and send you help. Mama, don't cry. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord will help you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. See me after the service, madam. In Jesus' name. Thank you. I pray for you, sir. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord change your life, change your situation right now. In the name of Jesus. You are the one with the child? Please come. We are going to pray for the sick now very quickly. What's wrong with him? He's running temperature this evening. Just this evening? Yes, sir. But he has been having persistent cough. 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 Let's pray for him. Lord Jesus, I pray for this, your dear son. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I decree and declare that this boy be made whole right now. And for you, his mother, I command that everything the devil wants to put in your stomach, let it leave you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Please, why are they here? Mama, come. Please stand up. The Lord is visiting you. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's taking away reproach and pain Amen. from Amen. your life. Amen. This is what he's saying. Please stand up. Please stand up, man. That he's rolling away reproach. You see, as God speaks to one person, he's only using one person as a point of contact to speak to everyone. It doesn't mean that we have to call you. The time will not let that happen. Are we together now? For instance, madam, are you from Kaduna? Who is from Kaduna? Uh -uh, uh -uh, not just a person, a woman. There is a mama from Kaduna that I want to speak to now. This is a young lady now. I, I, a, a mama, like elderly woman. There's a woman who came here from Kaduna. Not a young lady, please. I, I want to just speak to that person very quickly. Mommy, look at me. You have gone through so much pain. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, it's your children that will wipe your tears. It's your children that will wipe your tears. May the Lord raise them and may they wipe your tears. I pray for you in Jesus' name. Why is she here? You are the Deeper Life um, lady. You are, you are a member of Deeper Life. Are you sure? Hold my hands. Lord Jesus, I pray that you do a miracle in her life right now. Put your hand on your stomach. God is taking something away from your stomach now. I curse it. Something is leaving you now as I hold your hands. You are even surprised. Even you, you would not have known that there's something there. I'm seeing like a malignant growth. Something that will later develop to a fibroid. I curse it by the God of heaven right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be over now. In Jesus name. Come my brother. You are James. I will pray for all of you, but you love Jesus. You love Jesus. I have to pray for you. Come. What's your name? Your name is James. Do you love Jesus? I prayed for one boy, one miracle service. 
very bad friends and I'm still seeing it again I don't know where that guy is and the Lord is asking that we pray for him again you see all these gentlemen you have to be careful it's important for us to be serious with God so that you don't land yourself in the police station hold my hands I pray for you the Lord is bringing restoration to your life in the name of Jesus Christ supernatural restoration sir I pray for you you will not I don't know what is making I'm seeing a thermometer up and down your chest and the Lord is saying I should rebuke anything that has to do with your blood pressure in Jesus name I command that it leaves you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit I pray for all of you come sir let me just make contact with you very quickly in the name of Jesus Christ Hasana Hasana we're going to pray for the sick now we have to be very fast Hasana Hassan, I'm seeing someone with the name Hassana. Is there someone like that? Please, very quickly. Hassana, whether you're inside, outside. Hassana from Kogi State. Hassana. Are you not Sado's sister? Is your name Hassana? You are sure? Look at me. The Lord is bringing restoration restoration the lord is saying i should stretch my hands on you in the name of jesus may you be a benefactor of the mercy of god the mercy of the living god the mercy of the living god the mercy of the living god the mercy yes it's all right if your names are hasana the mercy of the living god your name too your name is hasana interested in what I'm seeing. Hold my hands, my dear. The Lord is bringing breakthrough to your family. There is a spirit that oppresses you and it must leave you now. Go! Now! In the name of Jesus, I curse you by the God of heaven. Let her go. Never to return. In the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> She's afraid already. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. The light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. This lady you see, she's smiling. But there is a serious case. There is a very mad, wild spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's a reason why I ask her to hold my hands. This lady has been tormented and oppressed in a way that you cannot imagine. Now I command that spirit. This is koinonia. I curse you by the God of heaven. Be gone now. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you would see a gentle lady like this and she would not know what is responsible for her life. This doesn't mean she's a devil. It doesn't mean she's possessed. No. It's just the advantage that Satan takes over the lives of people. I command in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you what is wrong with this lady is not a little issue. This thing doesn't show on the face. So you just see people smiling. But they are victims of a lot of things. Let me pray for you, my dear. Come. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring you life now. Life, come. The devil wants to bring pain to your life. Hold my hands. I command it to come to an end now. Pain, repeated cycles of tragedies. I curse it by the God of heaven. An anointing is coming upon you and the Lord himself is giving you a supernatural miracle right now. There are three ladies. I just heard the cry of children. And there are three ladies. You are standing in for your families now. As I'm speaking, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is going to come upon them. Standing in for their families. Standing in for their families. Standing in for their families. Let the oppression in your family end now. This girl's family has gone through all kinds of things. This is Koinonia. I bring you the life and power that is in the name of Jesus. Now, this is what we're going to do. Please listen very carefully. Um, you know that we take out time to minister more specifically to people. I wish that we had all the time, but we have to work with time. And um, we're going to pray for the sick now. Please listen. 
whether you are inside or outside if you are trusting god listen please whether you are inside or outside aside from this particular cases if you are trusting god for fruitfulness for your loved one or any other person whether you are inside or outside please don't come in at random i want you to come in i want to minister to you myself aside from that now we're going to pray for the sick overflow one please all of you should walk to the front of your projector you'll be ministered to overflow two and the ones extension of overflow four please walk to the projector stand outside overflow three walk to your projector stand outside very quickly and those inside here i want you to just walk out to me very quickly we're going to minister to people in that order there are so many people it has pleased the lord to make this place a place of supernatural miracles please it, it doesn't matter where you stand if you are outside don't come in just move to your projector outside hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord we're going to minister to you now it will be very fast whilst we're doing that please your prayer request if you've not written your prayer request or that of your loved ones those online you're yet to write do that quickly so that the ushers can follow and then we'll do that very quickly every other thing from here will now be the prophetic declarations there are so many people inside and outside we are going to pray for the sick the lord has given us the grace he's given us the capacity there are people going through all kinds of things and um, in as much as we teach you how to live in health and wholeness we cannot allow the devil buffet you some of you are standing in for your loved ones some of you are standing here with incurable diseases hiv you've heard the testimonies there is nothing that has not been healed in this house sir the lord is going to heal you you will not die that virus will not kill you you hear what i'm saying i don't mean to embarrass you i hope you are not embarrassed because i look at you if i don't pray for you i'm seeing very soon this thing will eat you up i don't have to say more than that but you know what i'm talking about there is no virus there is no situation that has not been healed in this place and you know we don't announce miracles if they are not medically verified so that it doesn't look like people are just faking things so believe the lord especially if you are here for the first time it doesn't matter who ministers to you i just want you to believe there is a corporate grace that is at work here to minister and bring miracles to people we'll be very fast please those outside you'll be very fast uh pastor jimmy let's see um you handle overflow one outside um pastor alpha overflow two um pastor femi let's see pastor femi and promise go to overflow three mike you walk with a jimmy outside there and then um have i told you where to go to okay so we'll would go in that order i'm sure that i may just walk alone here there are a number of people who are not here we give those opportunities because it's also an opportunity to train and build people please quickly let's go father we agree that the corporate grace you have released upon this house and this family for miracles let it be released regardless of who ministers we minister in the name of jesus we bring that name that is above all names over every situation let your anointing speak this is the moment oh god where you cure the incurable this is the moment where you step into the lives of people let it be a quick walk let everyone here return with testimonies in jesus name i'm going to begin to minister to you but there's one person here the anointing of the spirit will come upon you so strongly that will be the signal of the grace to minister here right now this is uh, don't don't mind me i do all my crazy things um let's just walk by the spirit someone here in front the anointing of the spirit will come on you in such a mighty way the moment that happens then i begin to pray for the sick now thank you jesus for your mighty power that's the person down there so i can pray for you now bless you father thank you all right guys let's give god the very best please you can sit down you can sit down while you are sitting let's be praying because as soon as i'm done praying for the sick we'll address other issues very quickly so that we can finish on time the lord bless you in jesus name Let 
Gete Please help them whether you are an usher or not. New levels. There are people God is fishing out here. New dimensions. It's a call to your spirit man. It's a call to your spirit man. This is not for everybody. It's a call to your spirit man. If it's your call, you will hear it. 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 You must hear it. If it's your call, you will hear it. Your spirit will pick the signals of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The spirit of prophecy is upon that man. Who can stand against the Lord? No one. No. a ritual it's not a ritual no but listen brothers and sisters we bring this prayer request before the God of heaven representing the pain of people representing the mockery of darkness and you've seen all sorts of miracles that has come from here and we're going to pray now the Lord is asking me take off my shoes we are going to pray right now please I want you to participate I take time to explain this so that we all understand um, I may not be able to minister to everybody one by one but this is a representation of the cry and the request of people the other people are ministering to those outside don't worry those outside if they are still ministering to you just hang on those who um, have been ministered to already please just follow your screen can we stretch our hands in one minute and I'd like you to just pray in the spirit pray in the spirit to the God of heaven who answers prayers Jesus Jesus the son of the living God now arise O Lord come to your resting place Rule upon these requests. Let there be mighty, mighty, mighty miracles. Mighty miracles.
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that every request here represented tonight is turned into a testimony it's turned into a testimony in the name of Jesus the Son of the living God every request here no matter how impossible is turned into strange and speedy testimonies in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that for every request you have written here and all the ones online I release my faith and in the name of Jesus I declare let this be the last time you will submit this request the last time you will submit this request let this be the last time you will submit this request unto him that answers prayers the one who has beckoned on us to approach his throne without fear to approach with boldness and confidence we decree and declare in the name of Jesus most high the son of the living God every request here I say again is turned into a testimony in the name of Jesus turned into a testimony by the power of the Holy Spirit turned into a testimony by the power of the Holy Spirit turned into a testimony hallelujah this is the last phase of the meeting I want to pray and prophesy upon your life it will never tire me to say this in my opinion the greatest part of this service is what is about to happen now because believers are used to charismatism falling down rolling and so on and so forth we many times downplay the place of prophecy prophecy is very powerful and have taught us that there are two dimensions to the operation of the prophetic there is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic that God allows by his spirit to bring comfort to bring access to light and information that works hand in hand with the gift of the word of knowledge but the greater and more superior dimension of the prophetic is the creative dimension of prophecy where the word of God makes realities that have no business happening to happen the word creates a scene and adds it to the pages of your life so that something you had no business walking in you will all of a sudden find yourself walking in it and remember I told us the last discussion before we began to pray that one of the greatest reasons why people are limited is because of inadequate dimension of the anointing so alongside this prayer I'm going to be praying a prayer of impartation there are people th this thing is not just for showmanship listen if you know God and you love him and you see the needs of people you will covet the unction and the grace of God this has nothing to do with showmanship when people begin to make showmanship out of it is is inaccurately used hallelujah let's correct things now let's recreate things now please lift your hands i want to pray for you oh come oh come me man and run some captivities why yeah Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and grant some captivity, Israel. Rejoice, rejoice for Emmanuel has come to us his israel in the name that is above all names i decree and declare right now every door that has been closed over anyone here in the name of jesus the son of the living god i command that door to be opened now
the bible says have you heard of this saying that a city gives birth in one day but he said as soon as zion travails he says she shall give birth to son i decree and declare whatever you have been incubating for a long time revealed to you by the spirit but yet to manifest there is grace for performance and i command that you must have a manifestation now i decree it i declare it by the power of the holy ghost manifested blessings manifested miracles hallelujah i decree and declare where you have to struggle for everything labor for everything i open you up to a dimension of prepared blessings i open you up to a dimension of prepared blessings in the name of jesus christ i don't know who has despised the grace of god upon your life he said and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren I prophesy to you may an unction come upon your life tonight that will distinguish you I decree it I declare it. may an unction come upon your life tonight that distinguishes you in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says Elijah told Ahab saddle your ass and run for I hear the sound of the abundance of rain and Ahab was already light years ahead of Elijah but the Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and all of a sudden he started running on barefoot listen the Bible says that the disciples were six hours ahead of Jesus moving on their boat and Jesus got up and started walking on water there are many of you there are several things that have limited your pace I want to prophesy speed for you there is a grace that makes men to pursue to overtake to recover I speak to you in the name of Jesus as I pray for you the anointing of God will come on some of you and you will want to run physically please hold them I release that grace that grace for speed receive that grace now no delay I command speed speed of accomplishment speed of accomplishment in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah Isaiah 6 he says arise shine for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you he says for darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people he says but upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise verse 3 says Gentiles you won't look for them again Gentiles shall come to your light and even their arrogant kings to the brightness of your rising it says where you have been deserted so that no man passes through you I will make you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations I decree and declare from today every gift you have every dream every ability that is dormant and not being blessed and rewarded I command Gentiles to come to your light now. I command Gentiles to come to your light, to come to your business, to come to your profession, to come to your ministry. I make it so by the Spirit of the Living God. hallelujah and David said is there any man of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness and they went to bring a crippled man called Mephibosheth and when he came he sat down with David and he says you will continue to dine with me here in the name of Jesus where your strength cannot take you Satos where your current level of achievement cannot take you I decree and declare may the hand of God that picks a man from a dunghill to a place of prominence may that hand pick you to the next level of your life may that hand pick you to the next level of your life hallelujah it says and I will restore to you the years 
alas master for it was borrowed they borrowed an axe head and it fell double trouble and he said no don't worry where fell it i want to speak to people here who have lost things you have lost relationships you have lost money you have lost opportunities there is a system in the kingdom where they can call back things he said they are taking for a prey and none say it restore in the name of jesus by the name of he who can manipulate time and make yesterday become tomorrow and tomorrow become yesterday i command a restoration now i command a restoration now i command Hear me anyone here called jobless you are looking for a job or any of your loved ones in the parable that jesus gave he saw some people sitting idle he said why sitest thou idle he said no man employers and he said go to the vineyard when he speaks there is always a job in the name of jesus i create a space for you now in the name of the lord jesus i create a space for you now I speak anyone here or anyone standing for any family that has had delay especially in the area of fruitfulness he said be fruitful the first command he gave man right now in the name of Jesus hear me Mary said how shall these things be seeing that I know not a man he didn't say Joseph will come he said the power of the highest shall overshadow you therefore i prophesy everything that represents unfruitfulness it dies now in the name of jesus it dies now in the name of jesus i speak to everyone God worry. carry your children now carry your children now every aspect of your life that represents barrenness be it in the works of your hands be it in your finances in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I command supernatural results supernatural results supernatural results I pray for those who wrote jam and didn't like their results I change the result now I change the results now I change the results now hallelujah every family here that has refused to move forward i don't care for what reason in the name that is above all names your accomplishment for the next one month will dwarf what you have done in the last five years in the name of jesus believe it help them please believe it in the name of jesus Hallelujah. This is one of my favorite blessings to people. The ministry of destiny help us. I discovered, brothers and sisters, hear me, that it always flows from God through men. Everything money can buy, relationships can buy it. There are needless battles, needless battles that relationships can solve. The distance between you and the next testimony may just be a relationship but you see no destiny helper comes by his by himself they are called they are called they never come by themselves they do not even know he says the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon in the name of Jesus whoever must speak for you in high places in this season whoever must endorse the testimony of God upon your life as a man of God as a businessman whoever must advocate for you where your voice cannot reach I prophesy to the north I prophesy to the south I prophesy to the east and west wherever your destiny helpers are I command them to come into your life now Hallelujah. Listen. 
I know a woman years ago when we held our crusade in 2009 in Abuja it was her camp that we used she's not even educated but she had access to two people a very wealthy family that needed a miracle and she prayed for them and they became destiny helpers let me tell you something the easiest way to be wealthy is through relationships somebody can get up by the spirit and make you a partaker of his blessings are we together now we've discussed on finances and all the principles but brothers and sisters there is a dimension of speed that god can give a man and this is to help you be established fast so that you can focus on the purposes of the kingdom there is this spirit that makes people to be established so late it's not that they are lazy you cannot be established over 100,000 per month believe me you cannot be established over 50,000 per month you are too generous to even keep that money and whilst you give God will orchestrate men but we have learned that Satan can hinder them and pray specifically for finances I want to invoke the mystery of divine supply there is such a reality like supernatural provision this ministry is a, is a tearsome testimony of what happens when men covenant with themselves to make sure you rise he said men came to david in the cave of adulam entered a covenant with themselves that they must make him king you don't need plenty people you just need one person anointed and directed wherever your financial helper is in the name that is above all names i declare that between now and the next two weeks of june may they appear in your life hallelujah every dying business here every dying career every dying ministry that is as though you are not called i give life to that which is dying now i give life to that which is dying now hallelujah father it is my prayer from my heart for your people that by miracle service june you will return here 10 times better literally 10 times better hallelujah please lift your hands i want to release something there are people here you love god i gave you an example of this anointing there needs to be an upgrade you see the thing with the anointing is if it is there it is there if it is not there it is not there it's as simple as that the anointing is a very obvious quality of god it's not something you struggle to see there are many of us especially pastors who are trusting god for certain dimensions of grace it can manifest as anything wisdom strategies supernatural grace the grace for performance i want to pray for you activations are very necessary to drive people into great results i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus every dimension of the anointing that is available in this house every dimension from prophetic dimensions Jabo Sikata, there are people receiving it now there are others is being activated others is being multiplied in the name of jesus i open you up now strange levels of the prophetic strange levels the eyes that see and the ears that hear the impulses of the spirit i pray right now the manifestation of the spirit of revelation receive it right now revelation inside 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 take it now take it now revelation revelation into the mysteries of the kingdom hallelujah every operation of the gift of the spirit that is barren in your life and needed for your destiny i stretch my hands and i activate it now receive it right now i activate it now i activate it now i activate it now by the power of the holy spirit i release upon you right now fresh mantle for leadership supernatural dimension 
of the leadership grace let it come upon you you may be weak but it will distinguish you in the name of Jesus Christ but thou shall remember the Lord thy God it is he that giveth thee power brothers and sisters there is such a thing called the power the anointing the unction the capacity to create an atmosphere around you that attracts wealth I don't know how many people it will please the Lord to release this grace but I stretch my hands let it please the God of heaven to bring men into this dimension right now receive it now the power to prosper the power to prosper you may be weak but the power to prosper bring in favor the ministry of men into your life hallelujah I don't know what has brought your prayer life down but right now in the name of Jesus fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar capacity to pray in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ hear me whoever fights you goes down instantly I say it again whoever fights you whether in the secret or the open goes down instantly It says you shall call on Aaron and his sons he say and you shall take your honor and give him honor is a mantle is transferable let me tell you this thing called honor is not about accomplishment there is a grace that makes people distinguished I pray for you from today that grace for honor I release it upon your life may you be honored at the gates of your destiny may you be strangely honored at the gates of your destiny whoever has said over his dead body for you to move forward tonight may their prayers be answered We believe in family in this place no matter how lifted you are if your family is not lifted he said as for me and my house we believe in family we pray for our children whether in the womb or born we pray I prophesy over every family here that the devil is trying to corrupt the testimony of God's faithfulness tonight in the name of Jesus supernatural lifting for every family supernatural lifting for every family Supernatural lifting for every family. Supernatural lifting for every family. And finally, I pray for you. In a way you have never seen, whoever looks at your face, I compel them to favor you. Listen, the Bible says, Esther found favor on everyone that looked at her. For as long as you made contact with Esther, and you looked at her face you were compelled by an anointing believe me I have seen this thing work in my life I prophesy to you men who have no business blessing you as they look at you I compel it from their spirit may they bless and favor you may they bless and favor you may they bless and favor you thank you for lifting Thank you for lifting. 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 We're rounding up, but the Lord is giving me a word here. The Lord is speaking to a family here. And he's saying, I should tell you, it will be like a dream. When in three weeks, it will change your life. It will be like a dream. 21 days in three weeks, he will change your life. Whoever this is for, I release it to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is also speaking to one person. You are going to start a business next month on the 5th. 
and I'm seeing before 31st, it has made you a millionaire. In the name of Jesus. I'm not motivating you, I'm speaking as the Spirit is giving me unction. You don't believe it, you will never see it. Never, ever see it. Every difficulty you came here with, in the name of Jesus, you leave it down here and walk back free. In the name of Jesus. Quickly, in one minute, everyone still standing. I want to make two altar calls now, very quickly. The first, please keep standing, everybody. No moving around, inside, outside, please. There are people here, men and women, who you have seen the things that the Lord has done by His Spirit. Please, let's keep standing to honor them. And whilst you watch the power of God move, the Holy Spirit began to convict you that you need to belong to this family of faith, the family of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are saying, man of God, if you will pray for me, I'm ready to completely surrender my heart to Jesus. I don't care how many times you have come out in response to an altar call. The second category of people who will join them are those who at one time you have made commitments for the Lord Jesus Christ but you have found yourself derailing in many ways and you're saying man of God if you will lead me I will run I will run run to Jesus now these two categories of people I know there are people outside overflow one two three wherever you are please our time is gone I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain I'm going to count five wherever you are leave your seat and run now please clear the way for them one quickly quickly let's honor them as they come quickly run to jesus now please quickly inside outside young and old quickly quickly i have decided to follow jesus no turning back run to jesus no turning Please keep coming don't sit back there now look at me brothers and sisters i appreciate you for this great decision you have made the bible says as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away when you come to him he has the power to make you you have no ability to change yourself but you have the willingness to hand over your life i want to pray for you listen i don't want you to just recite this as a poem i want you to mean it from the depth of your heart standing before jesus the firstborn among we the begotten and his holy church i want you to make this confession from the depth of your heart lift your right hand as a symbol of surrender and say after me lord jesus say it again lord jesus i believe in you that you died for me you shed your blood for me you rose again for me tonight I willingly receive your life into my spirit I declare with my mouth the Lord Jesus and I confess with my heart that God raised him from the dead I declare right now that eternal life is mine I receive it into my spirit I'm free from the power of sin the flesh and Satan from today I move forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted I pray for you spirit of the living God you represent the presence of Jesus now in the name of Jesus Christ I'm praying in a very supernatural way spirit of the living God by the power of the Holy Spirit let these ones never be the same again in the name of jesus christ 
may they never be the same again i pray by the power of the holy spirit that their lives will be objects of praise in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven i declare a new life for you i break away from you every influence of darkness capable of jeopardizing the quality of god's life in you i release you to be victorious i make you victorious by the power that is in the name of jesus hallelujah praise the lord thank you for this great decision now i want you to follow the lady waving her hands they would um lead you outside have a few details and then um, just communicate a few things to you please cooperate with them the lord bless you i love you and congratulations very quickly please guide them guide them very quickly let's do this as fast as we can dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye